Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Fans in Motion podcast, the only podcast that you didn't know you needed. I'm looking at my friend Josh, and I want to say to him, because this song means so much to him, cocaine and women, they treat you the same. Set you up for the nightlife and leave you ashamed. One too many habits and none ever satisfy me. Say hello, Josh. I remember being in the first grade, listening to that record, and going, <laughs> you know, thinking, now this is the shit they need to teach you in school. I don't yeah, that's no I mean, math. I just need to right. know, you know, little Betsy Sue on the playground over there, you know, trying to give me kisses and stuff. I know how it's going to turn out. And it would end up ruining your life yeah. the rest of your days. So, you know, I, I, I on the playground, I was learning about the women, but I remember at six years old trying to sneak to watch uh, Scarface on um on the movie channel so i could learn about the cocaine part you know piles of it no. um, say hello to my little friend yeah the whole world's a uh needing to be uh you know so uh you know the, all the good quotes so uh anyways there Some we bad go cuban accents puerto rican <laughs> accents you know uh anyways how you doing how you doing i'm good man i'm good uh i'm happy uh Real quick, our Bengals are back in the playoffs, so we got that going for us. Who day for those of us that are fans? Uh, Tom Chapin, sorry. Oh, no, not sorry. Your team actually snuck in, so I'll give you that. But uh, anyway, so let's get this thing going. Brent is not with us today. He's unavailable at the time we are recording this. So it's just Josh and I. You'll have to get by without Brent. Sorry. Uh, the last episode we put out was the uh, 2021, the year in review. Josh, do you have any thoughts or anybody uh, correct you or tell you something we missed? Well, there'd be no corrections because <laughs> to correct someone, they would have to be incorrect. And that just is not. Uh, that wasn't you. It's not possible. Um, let's take a gander here. Well, one thing. Well, we'll, we'll get back to that later. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we can tell that we're not the most prepared. Uh but, uh, you know, we had some good comments, Marianne. I don't know. We always butcher her last name, Sikiela, Sikiela, something like that. Um, you know, she said, you know, she loved the podcast and the Facebook page and grateful for us three guys for bringing us fans closer to Night Ranger than ever before. So that was a, uh, a, a nice comment there. Um, what else we got? Someone said I didn't sound like Nick Nolte on the last episode. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was Brenda uh, Vaccaro. I don't know who yeah. that is, but um, whatever. Um, and uh, but yeah, like I said, there's a lot of people who uh, were, you know, given the same sentiment that uh, you know they're thankful for the page and and the uh, podcast, and it it does. We've yeah, I think I, we've created a good headquarters for the. Uh, night ranger nation yeah i want to throw it real quick so um you know i'm i'm usually the one who's very slow to read comments and re respond to people but i did catch one on youtube and i wanted to at least shout this person out and hopefully they at least keep watching this is a bb shout it, shout it out a window bb yeah <laughs> my mic won't reach bb i think it's clima bb k l i m a uh, yeah he's and said, I really wish this group wasn't Facebook based. I'm not on Facebook and never will be. But I responded, at least they found us all on YouTube. And that, you know, if you're watching again, thank you so much. And uh, maybe someday uh, you'll well, join some are, social media, but you don't have to. Also on Instagram and Twitter. So, I mean, yeah, if you're not going to follow us on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter, I mean, I don't know what, you know, I mean, I guess I could type something up and send the Pony Express out. But uh, yeah, I mean, the sad part uh, is, I don't know how you keep up to date on things, but I'm not knocking you for not being on it. My, my wife isn't on any social media. She can't stand any of that stuff, but at least they found us on YouTube and they watched. And so congrats and good luck to you and hope you uh, stay watching us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, if, if Facebook's not your thing or whatever, there is Twitter and Instagram. Uh, most of the, when it comes to fans in motion, uh, definitely most stuff is obviously Facebook because people can go on that page and post to where on Instagram and Twitter, it's, it's, you know, only 
me posting. Twitter's a good one because I can uh, retweet everything Jack, you know, Eric, Night Ranger tweets. Any of the venues are playing at with ticket links, I can retweet. So if you're going to pick one, I would say Twitter over Instagram. But uh, anyways, there you go. Anyway, that's that. I just want to throw that one out there. Um, so th this episode is really cool. Um, I love it when we do these. We had a friend of the show, Eric Levy, join mm -hmm. us again. And uh, this episode, he helps us with his ranking of Dawn Patrol. And uh, these are fun. Uh, it's I like I always enjoy when we have a little back and forth over where our songs landed. And then, of course, to see where Eric uh, puts them. Um, so this is going to be a fun show for those of you. And I think everybody seems to enjoy these. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, we, uh, I was talking to Eric and I was like, Hey, I want to, we talked about, you know, doing this when we, cause we ranked midnight madness with him. Um, and I was like, you know, talking to him, I was like, you know what? It's been a year since we did that episode. And it was the first episode of 2021. So it's like, let's keep that tradition up and let's record us ranking Dawn Patrol. And I'll make it the first episode of 2022. So we recorded this probably somewhere middle of December, somewhere between maybe the 10th and 15th. I can't remember. Yeah. So it's been sitting here for a while. But um, and for all the hardcore listeners, uh, you will know that we did an episode where we ranked um, uh, Dawn Patrol probably when we first started doing this. But I couldn't remember my list and your guys' list. I mean, my memory is about as long as my dick. So um, so we went ahead and just re-ranked them. So I don't know where they they stay, you know, like if you go back and compare the original ones, yeah. I'm sure they're somewhat the same. I can remember some of it. That, that's the episode where the uh, the more cocaine, less trousers uh, yeah. saying came to be. So uh so anyways, um, you know, it's always a good idea when Eric, you know, ranks his employer's work and. Uh, Carefully and gently. Yeah. Watch so, what you say. And it's good to, you know, he's got the perspective of playing all the stuff live. So it's a different perspective than, you know, us three yahoos sitting there um, just yeah. listening to it. You know, he's a musician. He knows how it's been um, arranged and composed and how it goes over live so uh i think everyone will enjoy seeing eric's um point of view on it and, you know everybody likes seeing you know how close they are to getting you know doing their own rankings and seeing how right they are compared to mine so um yeah, exactly good luck my friends so we got that coming up. So hopefully you'll uh, sit back and enjoy that. Uh, Eric is always awesome on the show and he's uh, very generous with his time with us. So uh, we always enjoy that. Um, Josh sliding into any night Ranger news, anything that you can, I know it's not much happening right now, except for, I think tour dates and stuff, but. Well, um, so over the weekend, so we're actually recording this what Monday, the 10th, whatever date is. Yeah. So this will be a quick turnaround. Usually some of these intros we do, can be almost a week old but um you know this should be released tomorrow so over the weekend night ranger played billy bobs in uh fort worth texas and the uh rock in the bayou, bayou festival in gonzales louisiana likes home where you make it no he likes to see almost naked no 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 so they were playing the uh, <laughs> uh louisiana there so uh um so at Billy Bob's Fort Worth, Texas, which I have a lot of live CDs from all the country greats that play there. They, they usually release a live CD after they play there. So oh, okay. Merle Hager, I was sending them to uh, um, Ed, sending him a picture of my Gary Stewart and Merle Hager, David Allen Co. live CDs from Billy Bob's. And he just sent like a smiley face calling me, yeah, hillbilly. But uh, um. Uh, so they played Billy Bob's and it's the first time that, uh, we got to hear coming for you off the new record live, the opening track of that record they opened with. And you know what? I was thinking about it. If I remember correctly, when we did this 
rankings with Eric, I think we got just off topic and we're talking about, I, I, I know I talked to Eric about it. So I think it was on this. I could be wrong. Maybe it was just a conversation, but I thought I had you guys and maybe like you guys were with me. So it had to be this. Anyways, if you watch, you'll find out because I don't remember. Um, but uh, we were talking about the opening song somehow, some way. And I was like, that to me is a song that could be dropped and play rough, could be thrown in there or something off the new record. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe if that's what I said and it's on there, it just shows you how influential I am. So uh, <laughs> maybe next time I talk to him, I'll be bringing up halfway to the sun or uh, there you go let's let's get something it like that but uh anyways coming for you they played um they played it uh at both shows um so you if you go to the facebook page sorry whatever bb kilna um you go there i, I shared like I, someone had posted it live and so i shared it to the facebook page so everybody could see it uh, Lance Rushing just posted to the page today. I didn't watch it, but I posted it and talked to him for a little bit. He live streamed basically the whole show. Nice. So he posted it on the page. So you should be able to watch the whole show from the Gonzalez show. Um, and then there was a picture that, you know, Eric and Kelly both sent that has uh, them with Bill Champlin, who, uh, you know legendary vocalist should be in the rock and roll hall of fame with chicago was not an original member but was during that um was during that uh pivotal um what are you doing uh, playing the drinking game over there Nah, uh, people <laughs> that's hold on yeah listen here jack blades yeah i thought it was Ooh. jack brad stop um, talking about us yeah he's like you know we're not doing that song no more. We're not doing Halfway to the Sun. Yeah, um, let it go. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, what was I fucking saying? I talked about Champlain not being in the yeah, whole thing yeah. of Chicago. He, yes, he uh, he sang some of their biggest hits, Look Away, and a couple others. Anyways, so there's a picture of them, him with Kelly and uh, Eric. I think Kelly sang on his last record, too, on a couple of tracks um bleeding secrets i think is the title of that record but um so there's that um this coming weekend they got the show down in key west horrible they got oh, yeah. there this time of year but um so they'll be heading there um brad is probably re recovering this morning from his heart attacks for the uh his raiders uh almost giving up the Ooh game to the chargers and now they they won and the last minute and uh they will now be facing our cincinnati Bengals. so brad's got a week to enjoy that victory for uh he cries some crocodile tears this coming weekend when the uh cincinnati Bengals end their 30-year um dry hopefully spell we'll be, of playoff hopefully victory. we'll be celebrating a victory over brad's raiders nothing personal bradley but uh yeah um and uh one show went on sale which was uh the show that's it's they're advertising it as clear water but it's in port something whatever one of the ports there about 30 minutes north of Clearwater. it's put on by ruth eckert hall uh, which is in Clearwater, but it's an outdoor show that's about a half hour north so you know little details but anyways that's how as of right now they're pushing it as clear water so anyways um that show is on sale and uh i think that's all right Anything? yeah i mean and we got lima coming up so i think a bunch of people are talking about yeah. being there i think uh we are all going to make an appearance i believe there yeah uh bristol the night before in uh, virginia slash tennessee very few tickets left for that if you're going to go it's not a very big venue um so if you're wanting to see a nice intimate show uh that bristol show is going to be the one for you and uh then the next night whatever night that is 29th or something like that yeah uh, 
yeah, playing uh, in Lima. And uh, yeah, I think all three of us will be there. Should be a Plan. good time. All right. Well, hope we'll see some people there. If you see us, come up and say hi. Uh, maybe we, Josh will have a sticker in his pocket, or a uh, you know, the sticker depends on you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I can't, I can't fucking find mine. So <laughs> I've got some. I'll bring you some, my friend. Uh, anything new, Josh, that you want to yeah, show off? Yeah, we got some new stuff. I figured. I mean, I'll show off my new shirt I'm wearing. What do you got there? Is that is that yes. official? Uh, if you ask Gene, it's probably not. It's but not. it's a kiss with my Ohio State Buckeyes. That was a gift from my niece there and her husband, Nicole and Brody. <coughs> they know me. Not hard to shop for me. Must be wearing your Night Ranger Dawn Patrol shirt for this episode. <laughs> I should have been. All right. So one thing I picked up was um high enough 45 oh yeah um i'm pretty sure this is mexico let's see here blah 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 blah. is it is it mexico tell me uh hold it up again i mean where else no i mean that was a pretty big hit that was a probably release well i know this was also the album was printed in a yeah, this is Mexico. It was printed in Guatemala. There's actually a Guatemalan release. So you can see that it's got, you know, it's in Spanish somewhat. Uh, kind of weird that this opens up like oh, this. But there's nothing there. And then you got the back cover. And then it is a promotional. It's a disco uh, promo. So you can, let's see here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'd never seen it before. So writing on it, you think that comes from uh, like the DJs or who? Yeah, I think it says June 10th, 91. Wow. So most of the time, if you see writing on there, it's the dates that they're some date that they're playing this a lot or when they got it in. Yeah. So. That's about right. It was, you know, it didn't catch on until a little bit later. So, so there's that. This is something I eyed for a while. I just didn't pull the trigger on. And I've been selling some extra vinyl I got. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy it because I've been looking at it. And I liked it because there's two versions of it. And I like this one because of the photo and the little hype sticker on it. All right. It's a Japanese songbook. Ozzy. For Ozzy, and it's got Brad. Who's that guy with the fuzzy head? And it's got this. Oh, Randy little... Rose and Gillis. So I thought with that, the other one just has the one that you see the most is with uh, Randy Rose. So yeah. there weren't a lot of these printed just because Brad wasn't. Uh, Brad wasn't with. Uh, with Ozzy all that long. I guess I never opened this damn thing. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. You know, I've said it before and I'll re- I'll mention it again. If any of our listeners and followers are if you're readers and you haven't read Rudy Sarzo's book, Off the Rails, you need to at the very end there's a nice story about Rudy and Brad and uh it's pretty cool. But also a very good book. Rudy Sarzo is so cool. I, I would love to meet him someday. It just uh Talk to him. There we go. Look at this. I guess I forgot I didn't open it yet. So look at that. I mean, what a life Brad's lived, man. I mean, you got to think like at the time he's out there touring with Ozzy, he had already recorded, I believe they'd recorded at that time dawn patrol or parts of dawn patrol you know at least demo versions of it here's a cool photo i've never seen yeah look at that tommy aldridge so there's that it wasn't cheap i mean it wasn't it didn't break me or nothing but it's one of the songs i was eyeing and um figured you know if i don't get it i'll probably never see it again so well, and you're kind of a completist on your collecting stuff, so it probably would bother you knowing it's out there and you don't have it. 
not not necessarily. I mean, think so? it's it sat there for a while. You know, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I, if it would went down in price, I may have jumped on. The only reason why I didn't was because I have some albums that are basically all profit to me now. Yeah. And I sold three or four. I'm like, eh, you know what? I'll get it. Pull the trigger and, on it, yeah. So, and then the other is I had shown this somewhat on a previous episode, but I didn't have the complete thing. I didn't know exactly what the complete wing was, but I knew it probably had something more and it is this oh nice so is that a that's the whole album whole cassette but in like a cardboard like a sleeve like a oh, that's brad um like a single sleeve would have been well if you remember is, and are had, the songs I in just, the same order i just had this yeah which was from korea because it had the ministry of culture right. and information so then i see this being sold and like well figures i bought it you know a couple months ago without that right. cover and it wasn't crazy expensive but so i went ahead and bought it because you, you gotta think this is cardboard how many of these survived you know so that's what they, they were just selling the cardboard cover not another version no they were selling they sold the whole thing so i got oh, the whole thing now. so you got two of them now but uh it's like how you know how you know these things aren't surviving 40 years so this will survive 40 years more than the other so anyways i went ahead and got it it's like i said it's unique it's got that you know little rat on the side on that one and there's jeff on this side so um but yeah nothing audio wise is different uh something's different hold on I feel like we Under talked about love. this you know what they leave a song off. What do they leave off? Hang on, I can pull it up here. They leave off. Um, can't find me in thrill. What? Because the culture, the the uh, ministry of culture and um, whatever it is, culture and information does not like cocaine and women. I mean, how do you know? See that you try it, you know. And then I got myself another Christmas gift. I got this monster. That uh, George Jones. They, this is a great company out of Europe called Bear Family Records. Oh, and, you've uh, talked about them before. They do shit right. And so I got, so back, you know, George Jones was on so many different labels back in. So I got the box sets for, his other labels this is the most recent one came out a couple years ago these are the very beginning star day so 1954 yep. to 1961 and what's great is comes with you know just Jeez. a book that is just so well done that's like a coffee table book and it goes through um goes through each tr like track like when they recorded it what take it was everything else wow you take out the nice little styrofoam there and then you got all the cds how many cds are in there it's six disc some of these cases hold two cds um you know, not to jump off topic there. We got I don't there. You can see that, Kelly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, go ahead and give me my number if he's asking. Tell him he can call me. But uh, so, anyways, there you go. You guys got to put up with that shit if I'm doing the podcast. So, because I have no one else say, to show that off to. You know, my grandpa. You know, but he's there's a handful now, of people so. that that's pretty cool to. Um, not to jump, stick with George Jones there for a minute, and not to promote another podcast. But uh, you and I have talked about Tyler Mahan Co. Uh, his whole season this year is about George Jones. And he also talks about the bear family. And he always says in the show, if you want the most complete, respectful the packaging, this company just never fails. And he always promotes them and says, you need to go there. And you know, if you're a fan. So uh, I thought that interesting that you, you brought up uh, him. Cause I've been, uh, I I'm a fan of his show and it's, um, 
if you're a fan of the deep history of country music, boy, that show is something to listen to. And it's, and if you, uh, if you want the best hardcore country from the 50s, 60s, 70s, the places you're going to find the best quality and the best product that has everything you want is from Europe. And, uh, and you know, doing a little bit of history and stuff, um, you know, one of the reasons why is that music was so popular over there was everybody in the 50s and 60s and 70s was craving that American culture. And obviously you don't have satellites and stuff like that. What do you have? Well, the one thing you could get was the Armed Forces Network, which was radio stations and for the military bases. So, and they still have it today. You go to a military base, that base is going to have a couple radio stations. And back then they played a lot of country Western and a lot of Europeans got hooked on it. And to this day are, and that's why that stuff's real big in Europe. I tell you what, some of the best country music I ever radio stations. Like when I was in Afghanistan, they had this, it was like Sunday nights at 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. And they would play just like real hardcore classic country, Ray Price, Hank Williams, Gene Watson. I just remember when I first discovered it, I'm driving on like the world's busiest flight line. You know, I got F-16s and all kinds of shit next to me, right? And I'm just listening to like Ray Price and Gene Watson. I'm like, this is the greatest thing fucking ever. It's a little um, surreal. <laughs> it is, but uh, but anyways, yeah. And the rock station was great too because, you know, I would hear, you know, if they played Ozzy, they'd play Over the Mountain. You know, it wasn't yeah. Crazy Train or the same shit I heard all the time. And it was great too because they would play Over the Mountain. And then the next song would be April Wine between you and me. Yeah. And then the next song would be Steely Dan, Deacon Blues. Like I just remember those three songs. I, again, I was driving on the flight line one night listening to the rock stuff. And I'm like, how fucking great is this? Like, I got Ozzy, oh. then Steely Dan, then April Wine, and yeah, especially not... Over the Mountain, man. That is uh, one of my favorite Ozzy songs. Dude, I even I was actually I was <laughs> it it started right at the as as in this line to get fuel, and it started right when that was done. I'm like that drum fucking roll. Yeah, I'm like how fucking cool is this? That's so, awesome. Yeah. I tell you a, a true testament. You, what you just said about the uh, Europeans loving country. Uh, my my mother in law is was born and raised in England. You know, home of the Beatles, home of the Stones, home of the Who, and she loves Willie Nelson. Yeah. Loves Willie Nelson. She was she loses her mind. She goes to Willie Nelson. She goes, you know, living down here. She goes down to the Opry all the time. She goes down to the Ryman. Uh, he goes and sees Vince Gill and uh, Gene Watt. I mean, all of them. If they if she could see him, she went and saw him. And, I need to hang out with her. I asked her all the time. I was like, you know, uh, what's your thoughts on the Beatles? She's like, never listened to them. I mean, I knew who, who they were. She goes, it just wasn't for me. And she married, of course, a military man, which brought her to America. But yeah, she was a country fan. Yeah. That's, uh, like I said, just that was the one of the big influence was, you know, you could get the Armed Forces Network and one of them would always play country and Western. The best kind, you know, both kinds are the both kinds, country and Western. Western. Bring in the good old Blues Brothers boys band. I sent that link when they were playing Billy Bob's. Uh, I, <laughs> I I sent the YouTube link where they start playing and everybody's throwing the beer bottles and stuff. And they're like, all right, theme from Rawhide. And, you know, everybody. So I sent <laughs> that to a couple of the guys. So. That's good stuff. Uh, is that it for you on new stuff? That's it for me on new all stuff. Right. Brent's got nothing go new to show off. So uh, grab some Merle Haggard or something. Do we have any, are we able to do any shout outs at this point in time? Or we is can, it, we uh, leave that to Brent? And... Uh, we got a Brent Walter posted on the page the other night that it was oh, yeah. nine years ago last night. Uh, him and some asshole named Andrew went and saw Night Ranger open up for Kiss. The legendary Kiss, yeah. Beauty Arena. So that these, those two photos were, were from a couple nights previous. Um, yes. A lot of people were posting. Um, Pictures from the pictures from the two shows over the weekend. Uh, Chad Ledoux posted. Lance Rushing, like I said, posted some stuff. Peter Newman. Um, 
Kevin Avery got a, a birthday surprise. He's going to the show in July uh, with uh, 38 special. What else we got here? CJ Martin went to the uh, Billy Bob show. Um, Daniel Cherry posted the, uh, yeah, the flyer. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, that was the very first post I made on the Fans of Motion website when I oh was it when I you know created that face the Facebook page yeah um that was the very first one I posted oh that's that's cool um I think I got like three likes uh, probably me and it. Brent and you yeah, maybe his mom um, I mean I tell you a true story that we've talked about before but that night and I said something to Brent we talk about all the time like that one night I mean we were. 12 and we we're both 13 years old 13 and 14 years old and my dad took us because we couldn't get anybody to take us and it was cold and snowy in dayton ohio and that one night just set brent and i on a path of i mean it bonded us as just brothers i mean we're seeing kiss and fell in love with night ranger that night and we've been chasing those two bands for 40 years yeah you guys are lucky you got to see that that, uh, that I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't take that for granted. I, I count myself very lucky to have seen, uh, I, I said, I think every tour Night Ranger's ever done that they've toured, I've seen. Anyway. Uh, Jessica Thibodeau, I think, posted some cool video and pictures there. Kathy Kirkman Lane's asking who's going to the Lima show. And we got uh, Lisa Johnson Haynes and her husband going, Vicky. Uh, Aishinger is going. Robin Ludite is going. Melissa Layton, some asshole named Josh Stoverson, uh, yeah. Mike Smith, Melissa Atkins Miller, Melissa Layton. So, anyways, you know, the Bell Bogsman is going to be busy that weekend. Um, <laughs> uh, Michael, a new member, Michael Jamalosa, posted some stuff from uh, the uh, the Billy Bob show. Uh, Steve Park posted, I think we've shown this before, but uh, Jack in England and he's there on the same bridge. Sean McSparnge, drumhead and sticks from Kelly. So it's all James uh, Gellin posted some cool stuff from him and his daughter flew to uh, the fourth Fort Worth show. Love it. Also, if you guys are getting messages from Jack, Kelly, anybody, it's not them. So they're working on getting that stuff stopped, but is what it is. That's not them. No. Um, cool picture of Brad at the. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. I kind of blew that one up. I was trying to read all the bands behind it. I'll have to post. I'll get with Eric. Uh, he took a panoramic. So imagine nice. that with times three, because it was that yeah. that big. That's just a small sample of it. But um, we got that. Yeah, I mean, go to the Facebook page, and uh, you know, you'll see all that stuff. Uh, David Peterson saw that license plate, got Mojo. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and I posted the Crazy World track from um seven so those that don't have not heard it are able to hear it and yeah so listen to it while you can i may take it down you know i don't know Some copyright laws yeah i mean it'd be different if That's probably kelly texting you like hey josh take yeah that down. hey fuck face uh it would uh it'd be different like if let's say that new vinyl of seven had crazy world on it then i definitely wouldn't do it because there's an incentive to buy that, but yeah, there's nothing out there to buy with it on. So, right, you know, I mean, fuck, whatever. So, all right, we ready to kick this? Hand us over to. I've guided Lee. most of my life just on fuck it, whatever. So here <laughs> yeah, I am. They got you this far, right? Yeah, well, now you're on. world famous. Yeah, I reckon. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> world famous. I'm infamous. <laughs> What's infamous? Yeah, he's so famous that he's in famous yeah he's actually in it yeah all right you ready to kick this over to eric levy and his friends eric levy from eric levy and the boys uh you know created some controversy when he fired jack blades in the early part of 2021 but it seems like they've gotten beyond that so yeah they're not working together 
uh, everyone. Uh, sit back, relax, open up your favorite tasty beverage, and enjoy the fans in motion ranking Dom Patrol with Mr. Eric Levy. Welcome to another episode of Fans in Motion. And you can see we have basically our fourth host. I mean, he's been on here multiple times. It's kind of like uh, like when you win the, what is the majors, and you wear the green, what one is that, the green jacket? Oh, the Masters. The Masters, yeah. yeah. You, you, uh, you wear the green jacket or the club where at Saturday Night Live, if you host five times, you – or in that, that certain club. Anyways, whatever club we have on Fans in Motion, this individual is a part of it. He's uh, been on four or five of our episodes. He is the keyboardist extraordinaire for Night Ranger. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Eric Levy. Thank you. Thanks for having me yeah. back. You guys, are, you guys are the greatest. I, uh, I always blast on these. So, yeah. yeah. And, today and josh thank you and and great to see you all here on uh virtual virtualness yeah Hello. you know what uh i was i was pissed the other day because i ordered uh this uh this card it was an alan fitzgerald trading card that had a picture of eric levy and i'm like i want that and i ordered it but i got sent this <laughs> and i told the guy i go that's not the oh good they fixed it yeah, I was like, I go, that's not what I want. He goes, Well, that we fixed it is correct. I'm like, that ain't why I want it. I want yeah. <laughs> I wanna I, I want to fuck with the guy that you <laughs> and they're like, Well, we don't have those anymore. And I, and they thought it was weird that I was pissed because I was getting the right heart. Um, but uh anyways, Eric, how you been, brother? How you been? Oh, doing great. Uh, it's um this time of year it's i'm i'm happy i live in california you know, <laughs> sunny not shoveling anything out of out of my driveway or anything like that I, I get i get like fly into these cold weather cities for like a day and know <laughs> that i'm leaving the following day and, and that it's fun well i thought uh, it was a cruel joke where they sent you guys on the kiss cruise and then like the very next weekend of all places it's like scranton pa you yeah. know in the middle of november i'm like you know who's pissing off the uh, booking agent to uh you know hey have fun have fun in the caribbean uh next week you're you're heading to all places scranton uh it, it, was, it was nice to see our friends <laughs> out there too and 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 uh people people out in pennsylvania too always always fun in my opinion super fun rock shows in mm -hmm. in pennsylvania he, People know how to rock out there. Well, there's a lot of people from Fans in Motion that are from Pennsylvania. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, they are uh, great people. We met a lot of them at the uh, Cleveland show. <coughs> and uh, I'm sure uh, 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 hopefully some of them will be at some of these uh, upcoming shows in January and February coming up. So the Kiss Cruise tell us a little bit about that how was how was that how was that job that was that hectic and horrible and was you there going man this fucking sucks uh it's um it, that, it, that was a total blast it's, it, as 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 i've told you guys before on the show i got my touring start working on on cruise ships so it, I, I always have like a little bit of an extra you know kind of like walking around and imagining like okay you know if my 21 year old self was was able to see you know see me today and how i'm able to walk on board and, and play these fun shows you know I, I i play that whole like like a traveling in time thing in my mind and and have fun with that but um you know it's it, um re really one one of the one of the most fun times i've ever had on a boat and and that that really speaks, I think, to Kiss and and the you know the the atmosphere that they set and the tone that they set. It was um, you know pe people people were getting along and friendly and having a blast and everywhere was a party and uh, it's something else that I like about about Kiss uh, the the Kiss uh, people who support the band is 
it really feels to me it's like you know people are really free to express themselves and if you know if somebody wants to dress however they want to dress and it's you know it, it feels to me like a like a very welcoming environment in that in that kind of way but um I, I think that the highlight for me <laughs> the highlight for me um was was probably well I'll, I'll lead up to it um uh, uh, our, uh, uh, Ryan, uh, in our crew, um, had ordered a, uh, uh, Gene Simmons base of, of some kind. So, so before, uh, before one of their shows, we, we were, um, I, I ended up going with him and, and Carrie and, and, uh, and we were hanging out like, uh, you know, in the, in the back ship area, like, like right next to the, to the pool backstage and, and right before they went on stage like here here comes gene like in full regalia and uh, you know super high up on on the boots and everything and and um and 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 he and you know he he greets ryan and and says um uh do you have a pen so i can sign it and ryan's like uh and gene's like you forgot to bring a pen to a signing <laughs> along those lines and so somebody found him one and, and then Gene was like, well, do you have a camera to take a picture? And, and I was, and Ryan's looking around like, so I, I'm like, I'll take it. And I pull out my camera and I'm like, okay, one, two, three. And uh, so at this point, like I've never, I have no idea if, if Gene has any idea who I am whatsoever, because it, my general policy is, is that when I'm meeting people who are original members of bands, I uh, speak when spoken to, you know, I'm not going to presume anything, you know, let alone for somebody as iconic as Gene. So, um, so that the following night we were uh, getting ready for our, our uh, pool deck sta uh, stage show. And, um, and uh, Gene walked into our dressing room and, and, um, and starts telling these great stories. And so then he goes around and fist bumps everybody. And I'm kind of standing there like, you know, okay, and, and so then we end up fist bumping and and he says um you know why why sister christian why why not like a nice jewish girl and i, I just start like dying laughing <laughs> i'm like okay i guess he does know who i am uh, at least i have a jewish last name you know so but yeah. and, but really just uh what a blast the the whole the whole thing was was an amazing blast i, I had i had the greatest time really mm -hmm. Now, with all your uh, cruise ship expertise, was you able to lead um, some of the other rock and roll uh, stars there to the best places to get the illegal narcotics? Well, what would I know about anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> like listen you don't want the you don't want the the cooks you know on the top level you want to go to the third level these guys here all right and you want to say uh <laughs> you know you want to use this code word and uh the, the one illicit thing that i did was was i i ditched uh boat drill uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which i used to ditch all the time when i worked on ships it's where where you get on a cruise ship and the first thing you're supposed to do is like go to your lifeboat stations and and like you know mm -hmm. listen to talk about what you're supposed to do but like really when's the last time you heard of a cruise ship like capsizing and people having to get out on lifeboats like it you know i'm not saying it could never happen but uh you know it it seems very very improbable yeah uh, plus the uh probably you know if, if the boat's sinking it's probably not going to be easy or hard to find the big hole in the side of the boat anyways, just to go out of. Um, yeah, the last time there was a cruise ship problem was what Italy about eight years ago where they got, mm -hmm. it came in too close and it was st stuck. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. That rings a bell. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever uh, hear the story of C the comedian Craig Gass? I think he was on the one you were at, but uh, he was, yeah, he was, he was prior. And one time he got on the, uh, the intercom and he does a great gene simmons impersonation and oh, he, does got, he? he got on there oh, as gene yeah. simmons and he's like um the the boat is sinking uh for five thousand dollars you can get the platinum lifeboat where paul stanley will you know blah 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 yeah. and for three thousand dollars you can get the gold lifeboat and he i guess he got in some really big trouble because some people didn't quite get the joke you know which <laughs> then i'm thinking how did these people ever get enough money to afford that but um anyways so what we're doing today with eric levy is um 
we are going to rank the classic debut album from night ranger celebrating 40 years next year just celebrated the 39th anniversary <coughs> um previous episodes for some of the uh <laughs> that's the thing about having a kid um so uh the previous episodes that we've had we had eric on here where he played his favorite riffs keyboard riffs from fits and then we ranked um midnight madness as well so we enjoyed that so much we're going to rank um dawn patrol and it's always like i said always a good idea to rank your employer's previous work so uh <laughs> yeah i can't get into trouble doing something like that right? <laughs> well uh, great every the, one of the songs are great the good thing is the good thing is uh we would know if they're listening to the podcast you know yeah um you know i'd be mean, sad that eric got fired but uh <laughs> You know, it would be tragic at I the moment. Talk to you, I'm already fine. <laughs> but, but, uh, um, but yeah, we would know that. Hey, someone's listening to the uh, podcast. Andy, Brent, you got anything to say before we get started? Only thing I wanted to say was go back on the cruise real quick. Yeah, I think it was the first night you were playing. I had a friend trying to film it, and it was really windy. Yeah, and as he's filming it. He pans over to the right of the stage behind Kelly, and I saw Paul Stanley watching you guys. <laughs> and I thought that was so, that was pretty cool that, you know, he took the time to come out and, you know, see your show, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we, we, yeah. But, um, I remember, yeah, they were, they were hanging out watching and, um, you know, that's, the, they, they, they put on, they put on such a phenomenal show every, every time. Uh, they're so great at it so yeah to 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 have them you know showing their support and watching us and and really just the the vibe uh, it, it was that kind of thing that set the vibes for the entire boat you know it's it's like people seeing how kiss were you know not being you know like aloof or you know it really yeah. really being great great <laughs> you know it was um i think that set the tone and the vibe for everybody uh, that, that everybody was friendly to one another and uh, it was it was just a fun time through and through uh, but yeah uh, much respect to, to to paul and and the band i, I watched uh, both of their shows and uh, second one managed managed to get to actually get a pretty good spot to watch thank thanks to ryan i think because he bought that bass then mm -hmm. he, he he was able to get like a like a good area to stand in and, and yeah. carry and i kind of with him andy I was just going to ask you, how was the, um, I imagine KISS fans are all, a lot of them are probably Night Ranger fans too. It was the pretty good crowds and pretty good response from everybody when you guys hit the stage. They have to be, right? Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, the, the, the sad thing too was that um, uh, Sebastian Bach was supposed to be on board yeah. and, and it, uh, he, he wasn't able to get on. His band was there. And, um so yeah, that that kind of even you know left that much more of a hole in the uh, you know the the lineups and and what everybody was expecting to be able to hear on that boat. Um, but but all that all that said, yeah, the the, the people were just wonderful and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it absolutely showed up to both of our shows and made a bunch of noise and uh, made us made us feel good about it. Yeah, yes. that's great. No one can get on one of those someday. Yeah. absolutely i highly recommend did anybody give you shit for firing jack blades last april uh, it's, i think I, it's, I think maybe people have forgotten about it by now oh well guess what <laughs> i have a reminder we got a reminder coming up and uh yeah uh, four months yeah you know yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> you, you just have, it just happened to be like during our video shoot and <laughs> <laughs> i'm like on a bus with jack like i'm sorry i had no idea. i don't know what it is. i forget where we, we were at uh probably monsters of the mountain or something and i'm with jack and i don't know so something something wrong had happened like we were having to wait or something and you know like blaming it on you was the most 
like like it wasn't you know nowhere near it would ever be your fault right like it was and i just went you know we were like what happened i just went fucking levy and jack just <laughs> smiled just smiled and he went fucking levy <laughs> <laughs> i forgot all about that but yeah that was that's what i was blaming it on fucking levy all I right just... uh hey uh um you know, there was a song that's not on Dawn Patrol, but you got all those. I don't know if, anybody, if you don't yet, you need to go to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and follow Eric Levy's musician page because he every almost every day he's posting uh, different parts of songs and and, uh, and things that he's creating. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for the plug. I, I, yeah. uh, I, I. I sent a request over did you uh by chance on any of those keyboards that you got in your house there uh did you did you get time to learn anything new in the last 24 hours oh that's th this is going to be terrible let, let me listen to it once first so i don't mess this up because because we've never actually played this song how's it go again well this is the this is the key to changing that All right. Oh, wait. Dun, 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 dun. Bring in the. That's better. Down, down. Oh, I'm messing it up. No, you're. I'm doing the guitar. And you're. There it is. There you go. <laughs> uh, it sounds, so there's yeah, no excuses. So it'll be on the next set. Uh, thanks for reminding uh, reminding me of it. I've, I've listened to that one in passing, but you know, never listened with a laser focus of okay, we're gonna play this song. It's really wow. What a what a really strong. <laughs> that's 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 a great song. Great great production. I always it. said that was like the sister song to When You Close Your yeah. Eyes. Uh, it is a super fan favorite song. Yep. Really? And uh, I don't oh, know yeah. who exactly played keyboards on that because I want to say there was five different keyboard players on that record. On the Man in Motion uh, album, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jesse Bradman, Alan Pasqua, I think, and uh, maybe... A person uh, was involved who's legendary, like beyond legendary sound designer, Eric mm -hmm. Person. He has a, a company called uh, Spectrasonics and their products are a huge part of what i do <laughs> yeah um maybe a future podcast uh, interviewee um but uh oh, any anyways like yes uh um i was talking to eric the other day i think we had kind of a couple episodes ago we ranked man in motion very popular episode anything to do with that album is popular so I threw that out there to Eric. I was like, hey, what's the uh, chances of playing that opening riff and uh, making some 40, 40 year old, 50 year old men extremely giddy? Yeah. Um, hey, and also, uh, I'll also, learn how to play it better. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Eric, uh, new Night Ranger shirt. Oh, there, there I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's you. Hey, how's it feel to have some? 45 44 year old rube wearing your face on his chest <laughs> <laughs> that you would spend money to do it and i know, know. displaying it i'm i'm honored you know yeah I, i'm waiting for the time cool. that you know someone uh uh i'm on the phone with you like doing something and someone's you know interrupts me like who are you talking to and i can just point to the shirt i'm like this fucker i'm actually talking to this guy right here <laughs> this guy right here <laughs> the guy on your nipple no the guy on the left the other guy not the nipple guy um well, sorry there, eric yeah. <laughs> yeah that'll be probably the new saying on nadelman's video not the nipple guy who's that is that jack no not the nipple guy uh because this was the dawn patrol uh, episode that came with the uh trousers and 
we'll, we'll talk about when we get to that track. But yeah. anyways, we are going to rank the 1982 Boardwalk release, Dawn Patrol. You know what song goes with the nipple guy, don't you? <laughs> Coldest like December. Oh. Coldest December. I thought you meant play rough. I was Ooh. play rough, so you carry on like an ice machine. Mm-hmm. Nah. Um. All right. Uh, who wants? I think we should let Eric go last. You know, okay. kind of like it was a grand finale. Um, Brentry. Now we've ranked. We have an episode that we did right yeah. when we first started, where we ranked Dawn Patrol. Good thing is no one really watched it, so uh, or they've forgotten about it. Um, so uh, yeah, so we're just going to do it again. Plus, we didn't have our fourth host, Eric Levy, on there. So does it yeah. really fucking count? I don't think so. It's so not official to Eric's involved. This is the reboot. This is the original rankings or changing them up now I, with- well you know what my memory is about as long as my ink and uh i don't That's remember true. what my rankings were so um they may match they may not and it depends on the mood you're in back yep. then so uh and uh you know plus i don't want to piss off jack so every jack song is at the top you know how it works <laughs> uh so uh yeah <laughs> actually so I this, yeah this is we rank dawn patrol reboot this is our first reboot. Mm. Uh, or nice. uh, part D. Part D. Hot shots. Mm. All right, Brentry, give me 10. My number 10. Andy knows it very well. Penny. Yeah. Penny. Penny. Yep. Eighth grade, Eric. I had this girl named Penny Elliott that liked me and I had no. Wait, what if she's listening? Yeah. I don't care. It's been, it's been 40 something years. Um, it's been 40 years. And she liked me. I didn't want nothing to do with her. And every time I heard that song, I thought, damn Penny. Penny. <laughs> what, <laughs> what what was it that was like <laughs> about this girl? Just wasn't interested, you know. Well, he's a KISS fan too, and he tries to be like Gene. He didn't want anything to do with change. If her name her name was Dollar Bill, he'd been all over. Oh yeah. well, no, looking- she had a nice if she had a nice Jewish girl name, you know, maybe. He, he was looking for Beth. Shandy, I was looking for Shandy. Yeah, Shandy. All right. So Penny from his scarred childhood years. Childhood. Andrew, <laughs> what's your 10? Brent Brent knows what my number 10 is. It's Penny also. Yeah. Uh we're two sides of the same coin here. It's just one song. Be- I don't have the same issue that Brent has. I had no problem with Penny at school. Brent did. I just, uh, it's the song I just don't care for on this album very much. So if, if something's going to be 10, that one's an easy push for me. The other nine were not. The other nine were an absolute struggle. This is the <laughs> one where I go, there's there's nine ones and then there's a 10 or a two, however you want to put it. So Penny's my number 10. The rest of these songs are just fantastic. Yeah, it was funny because uh, a real quick story about Penny. Back on the um, High Road Tour, you're playing Northern Kentucky at a festival called St. Cecilia's. Sure. I remember that. And Andy was going to try to come down, but he didn't. And, you know, I got to hang with you guys for a little bit and I left and Andy's like, did they do anything different? I'm like, they fucking did Penny. <laughs> <laughs> of all the songs, I like Penny. <laughs> hey, but it sounded great. I'm like, I'm like, I actually enjoyed it. I hadn't heard it forever. You know? Yeah. I will say that. Like when I, when I saw the Donna madness show up in Cleveland, and they played it. I was like, you know, it's growing on me. Like, I don't have the disdain I used to have. Oh, I don't song. dislike it. It's like when I hear it live, I'm like, eh, actually, it's not a bad song. Well, just- since this is a big penny conversation, I-, I was going to save it to where I ranked it. But um, the thing I always had with Penny was like, you might as well be singing a song like with the name Ethel, right? Like, see. you know, <clears throat> there was I knew no one except for like my aunt's friend and my grandma's sister named Penny. Right. So as a kid in the 80s, you know, you might as well be singing Ethel or Betty, you know, these old names. And it just wasn't very rock and roll to my, you know, six or seven year old ears. And it's still not. But um, that was the biggest thing I had with Penny was the name. Like uh, it wasn't very contemporary, Uh, you know, like, you know, if it was Jessica or Rachel, like, yeah, I've. You know, I got oh, a lot yeah. of them broads breaking my heart. I don't have any pennies. Well, it was so. originally called Laverne, but 
<laughs> Kelly decided to go with Penny for Penny Marshall, you know. Oh, so yeah. Laverne just didn't work. Oh, right. and, and Josh, you know, as in full disclosure, you know, I did. My first wife's name was Ethel. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So it's like when you say you don't know. I do know an <laughs> Ethel, and I actually married her. Well, yeah. what, what he's not saying is and then she know, divorced me. He was twenty one, and she was sixty eight. But uh, <laughs> but she was she was part of that. Uh... True story. She used to get people all the time that say you don't look like an Ethel, and she's like, "Catch me in fifty years, and I will." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the other and the other thing she always got was, <clears throat> "How the hell do they name you Ethel?" Yeah. yeah. She got that all the time. Like I never knew an Ethel that didn't have the word ant in front of it. Yeah. You know? Or like, or Merman behind it. Yeah. Um, Ooh. my number 10 is one of the earliest Night Ranger songs, comes from the stereo era, Young Girl in Love. It's just one of the songs that sounds just a little bit dated. I still that's how great the album is. I still enjoy it. It's one of the best guitar solos. I'd have to think off the top of my head. I think it's Brad's solo. Um but the best part of the song for me is when they come out of the second chorus. I understand. Yeah, I understand. That whole part, that's I that saves the song for me. Uh but uh you know what? That might right there, maybe I should kick that up to nine. Let's make penny know. ten, it's easy. Uh, yeah. You know what? I am. Er- then, Eric that, do it too. then it's a it's yeah. unanimous yeah penny is 10 for me I'm, there you go Boom. i am i am flexible <laughs> i am flexible so all right Eric, I, no pressure uh, so i i i'm i'm gonna stick with josh's first choice on this and ah. go with uh a uh, young girl in love and it's yeah, it's I um you know I have to turn this into a positive spin, right? Because they're my employers. Yes. <laughs> but beyond that, um, it's, I I do think it's a testament to um you know the songwriting skill of the band, e- even it you know at, at at the very inception on the very first album that you know uh, all the songs are are of, of such quality that you know it's it's like Young Girl in Love is like an absolutely solid pop song and it's you know very very well constructed um yeah and, and, you know so it's it's really not a knock on that song in any way it's just you know if if, if i were going to listen to the album that's probably the last song that i would pick mm-hmm. but it's yeah. just personal preference at that point point. and if they got a problem with where you rank that they shouldn't have written nine better songs you know so <laughs> exactly. it's it's their fucking fault not yeah. ours. that's it the um, coincidence is a young girl in love was actually penny Oh, there you go. There's the, the there's the theory. Mm-hmm. That's a callback, Brent. There's That's a now, girl now Penny and girl in love. So this was, just got two songs out of it. This was <laughs> no, this was a song that they had on the stereo demos before they went with Jeff and Fitz. So this was a this song originated with Kelly, Jack, Brad, and then Jimmy Pugh and Jerry Martini, from what history I've been able to gather. Um, and so it was that was, you know, and, it, and it, that's why it's a little bit probably a little bit more poppy. They hadn't gone to that hard rock edge yet where the other songs all came out of. So uh, so young girl in love is Eric's number 10. Brent Tree. I made up my mind and I'm not going to waste any of your time. Young girl in love is my number nine. Mm. As is mine. It's my number nine, also, Josh. We're keeping score, so we're, we're just right behind Eric or ahead of Eric. However you want yeah, to I agree. It, uh, it it's uh, not to take your time there, Brent, but uh, I, I mean, again, I know we sound like total homers, but I do just love this whole album, and it it, it is really kind of a Sophie's choice putting one after the other. Well, I, so, I don't skip it when it comes on. I, I don't. don't I don't. I don't skip any any song on this album. It's a perfect album. I've said that before, in my opinion. Yeah. I just worked backwards. I put my number one down and just start working them back. And then this is how they fell. Yeah. So Josh. I mean, you can't, you can't get a better debut album. I know. Now, well, you could, Well, but you know, um, my, my number nine. Oh God. Was, he didn't say penny was at night. She sleeps. Uh, the and again, what saves these songs are the guitar solos. 
like oh you know at night she sleeps it's not bad i don't like that little uh uh the little thing on the keyboard or whatever the yeah. um <laughs> eric's job you don't like eric's uh, job that part yeah a little uh Beow. but and i think it's i think hopefully yeah that part i like that but uh, the the part at the end, do 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 do. That that part's awesome. Oh. There it is. Sleeping. Yes, this all of it. Um, I guess I could look it up, but I think it's uh, I think it's Jeff's uh solo, in that um, but that solo shreds. Um, hmm. I mean that is because it goes from this kind of dark moody song and even the from the second chorus into that solo it kind of just you know is real muddy so long and yeah. then all of a sudden wah, wah, and, and it's just kicking into uh um yeah. so like uh, it's like a kicking a door open it's like he opens it back like hey i'm, I'm still here i'm gonna find to out say. who uh does that solo in my head just listen to my in my head it sounds like a uh jeff watson so uh, we are going to find out i'm probably going to be wrong yeah. it'll be brad uh i should know offhand i'd have to hear it if it's i think if it's i got, think it's jeff if it's got a bunch of pitch sweeping it's brad if it's yep. uh yeah know, it's uh more solid uh more notes it's jeff it's, over there yeah well there's no uh no whammy you know i mean you can usually tell brad brad can play real melodic and you know you're like is that brad or jeff but usually if, if if brad's playing real melodic and he doesn't do the whammy bar at the very end you'll hear him do that whammy it's like there it is that's him i know it. and yeah uh, <laughs> not just the whammy but yeah his his personal approach to the whammy yeah yeah, yeah. got that dive bomb going on and mm -hmm. I've been I've been trying to make a list of like like very signature Brad Gillis sounds like there there's a couple on ATBO it's like uh where he's just doing that sound with the whammy bar I'm like that right there that three seconds that is you'll hear that on every Night Ranger album but uh anyways that solo by Jeff just kills on that song it's again probably my favorite song or favorite part of that song so my number nine is at night she sleeps. Eric, what is the night? Uh, I will go with Penny, just as it's number nine in the track order. Number it'll nine? it'll be number nine on my list. Number I've nine? I've met um I've met the real Penny in person numerous. Oh, there is a real Penny, and there's and a story. He's, he's extremely friendly, like like super kind. For wow, am I telling you something you don't know? Yeah, yeah I had no yeah. idea. All right, <laughs> we. Uh, ever, we'll Josh, go put an exclusive uh, graphic yes. right there. Uh, the, the one confusing thing to me has always been she's um, best friends with, uh, or uh, good, like great lifelong friends with uh, uh, Molly Blades, Jack's wife, yeah. which, is, which is how they know each other. And it, so it's, it, the one question in my mind was always like, well, she's so nice and we see her all the time and she's best friends with Jack's wife. But, you know, like the lyrics are a little on the yeah. disparage, but, yeah. you know, like, Oh, this wonderful person who's in our lives, you know, it's it's you know, you're so you got easy. two cities on hold. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, uh that's maybe... that's the that's the confusion. I I will <laughs> never ask. Yeah, maybe he heard, you know, the uh overheard the conversation that they had of you don't want to date him, he's a rot long haired rock and roller. And he's like, yeah. Hey, I'll get you back in a song. Yeah, they were Taylor <laughs> Swift before Taylor Swift, you know. Well, I think that's what Aerosmith song is. Uh, Joe Perry or uh, Stephen Tyler wrote about uh, Joe Perry's wife after they got in an argument. It was something off Toys in the Attic, Walk Us Way, or one of those songs. Really? Uh, sweet, emo know. sweet Emotion, something like that. It's one of those big songs uh, Stephen Tyler wrote basically after uh, him and Joe Perry's wife got in a fight. Anyways, number nine for Eric is Penny. So yes. besides me, we and I, moved young girl in love up to my eight um we all are about the uh same same uh songs here brent number eight 
at night she sleeps. Oh. So yeah, we're we're all. Josh just put me down for that too. I'm in the same. Oh my point. lord, did Andy you, just did you copy my list? No, I, I think this list is pretty much the way it was. My my number you two and three might have flipped. It wasn't as close because you guys gave me shit last time. What I'm thinking is you guys realized I'm right subliminally and it's ingrained in there. <laughs> no, nah. I, I got think that was how it came yeah, out. Well, it's on tape. We got it somewhere. It is, yeah, but, but nobody Someone watches has that. YouTube comments, please, right? Like, <laughs> can we compare <laughs> before and after? <laughs> Uh, I probably my, got my notes somewhere. My number eight moved from number 10 is Young Girl in Love for that awesome bridge and guitar solo. So, uh, Eric, uh, you, what do you got? At night she sleeps? <laughs> oh, it's I, my eight through six is I still haven't made up my mind. Ah, me. you're following. But for me. number eight, let's go with Can't Find Me a Thrill. Ooh. Okay. And yeah. Uh, maybe I'm just saying that to be no I'm saying that because I mean it um and and it's a great song it really is I I, yeah. I just feel like it's kind of vanilla next to um you know some of the more inventive stuff on Dawn Patrol you know, I've, I've got my own personal bias biases it's a, you know but it's a great solid song and and I'll say this too about Can't Find Me a Thrill is or Can't Find Me a Thrill is uh um you know we were still years away from uh guns and roses mr brownstone at this point right of of like a you know in the early 80s for a band of you know for a for a metal band to come out and and be like yeah you know we're all partying we're having a great time but hey we're we've actually got this insight about you know what it's it's talking about you know the the homeostasis of the brain reality right that it's you can you can chase the high no matter what it is but you know your brain's always going to bring you back um you know for for them to for them to recognize that and sing about it on their very first album you know it's, i i do feel like it's kind of a forerunner to something like mr brownstone by uh, by guns and roses well it's interesting that you say that because um a little bit of a spoiler is i had that rank pretty high on my list last time and my argument was now my my like con to it is to me it was produced like it was always just a little thin to where eddie and night ranger the song always seems so thick and bigger in life the production on that i just don't know if there's maybe there's just nothing else they could do always just seemed a little bit thinner on that song but what i liked about that song was the lyrically it was darker than most night ranger songs um, and that's where, and these guys were giving me shit on the last episode because I had it ranked above Eddie's coming out tonight. And oh, I told him that's I, wrong. I couldn't rank a song that has the word trousers in it above a song that talks about cocaine and women. Like I just couldn't do it. I go. And I, I said the line more cocaine. I less is there less trousers and that took off but uh but that's part of the drinking game now i think part but that's what uh what kind of like what you're saying that being dark yes to me that's what sets that song apart is the you know and dark night ranger's not really a dark band and that just kind of was i mean eddie's got a little bit of darkness the song night ranger's got a little bit of darkness like but uh, but uh well yeah but to me musically it's just a little bit not there but uh but yeah cocaine and women they'll treat you the same yeah. um it just had this roughness to it and i liked your analogy about kind of like the stepping stone to some of the stuff they talked about on um on appetite because they they're not really glamorizing it they're you know showing all the uh wrinkles and the dark sides to it and i thought that's kind of what can't find me a thrill um did as well and uh sure, yeah and you know i know jack must be listening because i constantly say on the podcast we always say the less trousers more cocaine and on atbpo track number four what word did he bring back since the don patrol record the the lyric with cocaine i can't remember exactly she's into what she's into i forget the lyric but i yeah. about 
but yeah so uh there we go i want to ask demonetize this video <laughs> I, I... <laughs> eric i want to ask you yeah. you brought it up and i and i wanted to ask this is so you said you have some biases and i, I wonder uh, playing the songs is it harder for you because we're, we're ranking these as fans and we've lived with these songs but you're actually you play them and i think we all could attest to this because we've all played in bands there are certain songs that i i just i love playing and there's certain songs i loathe when you see it on the set list but you know the fans love it so i wonder and you don't have to give names that like but do you have those biases that when you're looking at songs you're like Ugh. yeah i mean i get the fans love the song but it's not for me especially as a keyboard product this is just kind of boring it's i don't this doesn't do anything for me because you're looking at it from a uh a performer's point of view not a fan's point of view yeah interesting um you know it's i uh, like like truly it, like truly heartfelt I'm, I'm not just saying this because i work for them or <laughs> yeah. i'm in the band yeah but but truly like uh you know i i've been on some i've, I've been on some pretty bad gigs in my life you know um <laughs> I, I, we could share it, some stories but, yeah some stuff or even just like um you know it could be a, a high priced gig where you're just you know where i'm just like you know, playing cocktail piano for something. And it's like, cool, okay, nobody's listening and nobody's <laughs> listening. Oh, that person's doing this. And, you know, it's it's like, it's fine, but it's, you know, it's not something you can really feel passionate about. It's, it, it's like Night Ranger never has a bad show or, you know, not, not in my 10 years, not something that I would consider to be in any way, shape or form, even close to being bad, because no matter what's going on around us, I know that I can count on every one of them where, it's, you know, it's like, we're really going to give it our, our all. And, you know, you, it, no matter what the size of the, you know, where we're playing or anything like that, it's, you know, fortunately, we're, we're able to get good people there a lot of times too, who are, <laughs> who, yeah. who are, who are into it as well. And, you know, at, at least for me, I totally feed off of that energy. Sure. I, maybe because Night Ranger is such a, such a positive high energy band, you know, it's, it's like, I'm, I feel like I'm getting bombarded with that when I'm on stage, no matter what song we're playing. So it's in that context, it, it's like, it's easy for me to love all of these songs mm -hmm. and to have a great time playing all of them. And that being said to, to you know, long answer to your question, um, you know, a, a song like a song like Can't Find Me a Thrill for my own personal bias is like, um, oh, I don't have an organ sound pulled up. Where or do I? Oh, aggressive organ. <laughs> uh, that's why I never use these. <laughs> um, but it's uh, for that song. I'm I'm basically just holding like sustained. Yeah, just holding. So for so you, that, it's not. Which is great, you know. That's my role. That's my role in the band for those songs, and I'm and I love being able to do that and provide that. But it's, you know, that's that's a much different thing to like, um, um, you know the. I mean, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it, that's something like you know that's that's got more of a challenge to it that's interesting okay i'm splitting my brain i've got this here and i've got this melody here and it's yeah it's it's easy to be more engaged in in, in that respect so, but that's not saying anything against any right. of the song or i'm just laying it down either it's i, I still i have a great time doing that as well really yeah well, well i'll like, tell you real quick to follow up when where we were at the, at the Dixon show, there was a guy standing next to me, and I think it was only his like second or third time ever seeing Night Ranger, and he loved him. He just never had the opportunity to see him, and he kept saying to me, "We were talking and stuff." And yeah, Josh, you, I mean, you got him a guitar pick, which just made the guy's day. And he got a drumstick from uh, he, he's got the guitar pick. He got a drumstick from somebody in that craziness that you guys do. But I like I think it was rumors. I think you guys played rumors that night, and he kept saying, he goes, "God, if I just hear rumors, I'll be so happy." Oh. And it started playing, and he just lost his mind. He's looking at me. He's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's slapping the barrier. And I was like, and I was like, God, that's so awesome. And then I think, like, yeah, I wonder if these guys just look at it. Like, that's yeah, the next song on the list. Just nothing. Just a nothing song. And we're all, like, just screaming at the top of our lungs because we hear that doodle, 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 you know, oh, or rumors. whatever. We do have to be dialed into a certain extent. Like, you know, we have to make sure that, 
if if we haven't gotten our sound uh, sound check in, you know, uh, uh, our both guitar players need to be really confident that you know the delay times are set up appropriately and everything's like yeah. really set to go, so that Brad knows when he comes in with it, it's going to sound right. Oh, um, so awesome. But yeah, if we can't do it all the time because of that, and it is it is one of our um, songs that we don't play every show. So I'm I'm happy for your yeah. buddy. Um, yeah, he, oh, he lost it. Just lost his did. mind. Oh. He got the guitar pick of the night. <laughs> that one yeah. right there. Yeah. Oh, Carrie er- Kelly. Eric, I can make yours look like that. <laughs> All right, Josh, so, you hit something. I didn't mean to interrupt that's, you there. Um, you know, that's my right. pro- That's my that's my best achievement other than being a father designing a guitar pick. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Brent, number seven. Well, um, the the guitar pick gives me a thrill, but other than that, I can't find me one. So um, I'm gonna pick it for number seven. Can't find me a thrill. That's yeah, I, number seven. <laughs> I know we were just. I I, I thought about change, <laughs> changing it just to get people going. Fuck you. I, you know, I swear to God, send me away. Uh, seven? No. Well, all <laughs> we you didn't guys, talk earlier. All you guys are incorrect for the various reasons. I mean, Eric. You make some points, but they're wrong. But they're points. You, uh, the other two guys are just idiots, and they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> we yeah. are right here, Brent. Tough My, luck yeah, that's you know, that's not where you want to be. I'm from uh, a guy who wears a Detroit hat every damn week. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, my number seven is play rough. Um, get out! Of, you're, you're out of your mind. Done. Cut me off. Just uh, cut my feed. Now, here is my... That's going to make Eric quit the band. Thanks a lot. Way to go, Josh. Uh, Eric's number seven is probably Play Rough, too. But uh, (laughs) so Play Rough to me. Now, it is one song I think they could add to the set and uh, make fans happy because it could be an opener. They opened with that song in the early 80s. Um, There are live recordings of them opening with that. And the the whole vamp of when you guys come out and the down dun 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 and you know the the silence, I think would really break into that. And I think I as much as I love somehow some way, um, I think that's a song you guys could uh, put in that place as an opener. Um, now again, I'm I don't know all the you know that might be a great song where everybody's you know tuning into each other and stuff and that's why um it's there but uh uh to me that's an easy song to throw in there even though it's my number seven that's like the song i think you guys could play live uh, yeah. right away you'd have to drop that intro though to it no uh, they, they they i think changed it up and they if you really go back and you listen to the lot how they did stuff live in the 80s it's obviously not like they do it now or not like they even did it on the record uh brad used to do a whole little thing before the uh rumor solo Mm -hmm. um like hold stuff out and i can't remember exactly how it went but it wasn't like that on the record he doesn't do it now live but back then on those tours he would do that well you know why don't you on that japanese one they only had they were pulling from basically one album I don't, no. I don't think Don, Midnight, Midnight Madness was even out when I think they played that Japanese show that we all have. And I'm talking about on Rumors. He did that all the way through, at, I think, even Man in Motion because there is recordings out remember. there. That. It's just, you know, a 30-second part. Anyways, Eric, your number Hold seven. Hold on, Josh. I, I just did a real quick listen to Play Rough again, just the opening. And I, I, you really need to just rethink that. Turn your mic off, go listen, do it again, and come back to us. Re-rank play rough. That song's so freaking awesome. Well, where is it? Is it it's not going above the other ones? It's seven. All right. It's good, but it's seven. They wrote six better. Can't songs. even hear you anymore. I hear is blah blah blah. Eric, what's your number seven? Charlie Brown's fucking teacher is what I hear. <laughs> 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 number seven at this point. I'll I'll go with that night she sleeps. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's a correct answer. <laughs> I've never seen I, Josh be so well. Can't, can't find me a thrill is better than play rough. It's just that's the reason why 
play rough is seven for me. So uh, at night she sleeps and Eric likes, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's got a good, uh, that's a probably a fun song for a keyboard player. Yeah. yeah. It has yeah. to be. <laughs> just being able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But just you doing that made me drop it to 10. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, he's in the band. He can't be wrong. I I'm wrong all the time. His list is actually probably the only correct list Listen, next to me and Brent because ours is identical. And then there's Josh Rogue One over he's, here. He fucking Levy man. He's he's <laughs> it's his fault when it's not his fault. Eric uh, man, you're right on, buddy. I'm with you. <laughs> Brent number six. Eric, watch Andy's face. You ready? Yep. Andy's coming out tonight. Dead. Dead to me. <laughs> Screw you, Josh. You're right. Brent is wrong. No. This is where Brent has fallen. Over. I don't even know you anymore. Is your sister around? She's the only reason I started talking to you. I know. That's true. True Jesus story. Right. Number six. I, I, you, you know, we, you went, we, went, we went through this on the um, first incarnation of this, this version of the podcast. I, yeah, I expect we... this out of Josh. And it doesn't mean I, I, I love the song. Um, if they drop it occasionally, which they do occasionally, it you know, we just get something else. I've heard Eddie's coming out tonight for 40 years. That to me, I like it sometimes, but Eddie doesn't have to come out every night. I'm gonna try to find a way to block Brent's picture here. He doesn't have to come out every night, he does not have to come out every night. He does, yeah. he's got places. Yeah, to Jack, be. He's Jack to gets tired of going, Eddie, if you're out there, he gets tired of telling the damn story. Let's see if I can mute Brent, and Eric gets tired of hearing it. <laughs> you. So, Gosh, so for my I number Brent, to reiterate, number six is Eddie's coming out tonight. This He's coming that. out of number That's six. That. And uh, wasn't it Andy that thought, you know, uh, he was, li- li- you know, living the tenderloin life like he was eating tenderloin sandwiches or something? <laughs> That's I thought it was, life. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was tender young life up until yeah. about five years ago. So did I, I didn't Kendra know what Young. I didn't know what a tenderloin that yeah, I didn't know what the district yeah. was. Never heard of it. Was Cincinnati, like, Ohio. Yeah, you know, he's, he's eating a tenderloin sandwich. You know, I'm like, I don't. It's yeah, like, and his trousers are too tight. Yeah, you know, and well, that's because yeah. you know the tenderloin's always bigger than the bun. You know, yeah. and uh, anyway, that's what I hear anyway. Uh, uh. Andrew, number six. <laughs> uh, number six for me is the song, actual the namesake song, Night Ranger. You are, you guys are both wrong on this. So um, the guitar, the, the dual guitars on both of my them. five songs above it are better. In I love this song here. But I want to tell you what when Brent and I would hear him play this live, we would scream and punch I'm, each other. I love I'm this song, but going to tell there you are five what, songs better than night. I'm Ranger. going to tell you what the true number six is. Oh, it's okay? to be good. Listen, oh, yeah. It's when, always, you, here we go. when you want, when you want night Ranger, you either want a good, strong ballad, or you want something that's going to rock. I don't want pop. I want rock or a good, strong ballad. That's why number six is Sing Me Away. No, you are so fucking, fucking insane, Josh. You, did you eat paint chips as a kid? You drunk. Are you drunk now? All right. I mean, All right. so <laughs> listen, I like the dual guitars. It's iconic. Yes, but- iconic. It's not better than the iconic dual guitars at the end of Night Ranger and at the end of Eddie's Coming Out Tonight. It just isn't. Um, so, yeah, based on that, and I, I mean, it's science. It's there. It's number six. Sing me all of the science. I don't see the guy from Thomas Dolby's video going science with science. you at all. Eric. <laughs> Oh boy, this your is going number, straight to hell. Your number six. You want me to pencil in "Sing Me Away" right there? Uh, I don't think I can go "Sing Me Away" quite this early. Yeah, one Damn of right. us. One of us. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll go, but I but I hear your rationale, and it actually makes total sense. Damn like, oh, don't don't give you him give him that shit. It's not like the rockinest of rockers, and it's not you know a power ballad. It fits somewhere in the middle. It's a yeah. good number two song on the record. It, it fills a spot. It fills my number six. I'll go with uh, Play Rough. I really do. Oh, I, have I don't agree, but I'll accept it. I have mixed feelings about Play Rough because um, just like 2021, I feel like the lyrics are maybe like slightly cringy. 
if taken out of context, you know, <laughs> you can play it off like an ice machine or you can give it up to me. You want to play rough. No. I, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the kind of thing. If you, if you take that out of context, it, it, yeah. you know, it's like, that's how we roll in the Midwest. It doesn't sound like it's mean or demeaning. It sounds like, you know, they've just got their skewed relationship and it's, you know, it's, it, it doesn't sound like it's, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, yeah. Huh. It, it, it doesn't sound super nefarious, but it's, it, you know, it's not gentle. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if we could get away with those kind of lyrics on a, on, on like ATVPO and, and have, you know, I don't know, maybe we could, but, yeah. um, but but musically, I I love play rough. It's it's like deep and that um that outro section too. I I felt like I really got it. Um, like I had never played this song live from the band until the uh, the Dawn of Madness shows, and um and that that whole out uh, that whole ending section where it's where it's just like looping around the no, 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 no. Uh, yeah it's, I don't have the right patch but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and Brad soloing and it's like it's all vibey and it's and it's heavy, but there's space. It's like, you know, it's not exactly in four, so it's a little bit of like an elliptical thing to be repeating and it's it yeah, it, there's some real depth there. That's a very enjoyable very enjoyable enjoy, enjoyable moment to to wow, I'm tripping over my words. Enjoyable moment of music right there. Well, yeah. we you need to push that to be the uh, new opening song for Night Ranger, and we will test out those lyrics. Lyrically, I like it. I mean, more I I think about it, maybe it's I should have ranked it six and sing me away seven. Um, no. you know, um, you know, but uh, head hurt. Plus, it's, here. you know, more cocaine, less ice machine, I guess. But uh, <laughs> Brent, number five. My number five is. Night Ranger, Ranger. I accept that. That that is an um, acceptable answer. So well, you know, it it's such a like I said, it's such a strong album. As 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 I look at it, it just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger towards the top. So, like I said, you know, <laughs> Eddie's coming out tonight. Night Ranger, are they interchangeable? Sure, um, because. Like I said, it's it's a great it's 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 nearly if it's not a perfect album, it's nearly a perfect album, in my opinion. Sure. And God, just I remember counting the crickets when I would learn how to play that on the drums, and it comes in on an ant like in the middle of it. It's not. It's like <laughs> on an and, dan and dan, you know, start jamming. And I remember, you know, I would be so happy when I would nail that, you know. I think it's 13 cricket noises, if I remember right. <laughs> cricket chirps. Is that what your sample is, Eric? 13? They don't do the cricket. <laughs> we've, we've done it a few times. Oh, you've done, done the crickets? Times. It's, um, they, they've asked for it, but when it, when it comes in, but when it comes to it, it's, it's like, I, I just think it's way more powerful to hear like, um, you know, Kelly counted in. Yeah. And, <laughs> Uh, it, to me that's more musically like it just in, in the context of a show like you know why are we hearing crickets you know yeah. like what's the what's that supposed to imply what's the uh, artistic message you know and for for whatever they were um you know in, in the context of the dawn patrol album i think it makes more sense than in yeah. the live show. but i do i do have it here ready if whenever anybody asks for it, it's there well, that, that, there's, <laughs> there's the 13 thing. should be 13 <laughs> chirps that's the best. Yeah, if they do gonna, any more than 13, you tell them they're wrong. You're going to see <laughs> see one of the guys on an off night bottle of Jack Daniels, you know, in their hand, and all you're going to hear, crickets, Eric. I want fucking crickets. I said play the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaning on an ice machine. Play the crickets. Um, oh, you want me to play something off Hole in the Sun? That would be your response. <laughs> Not right, Brent. Uh, it's a joke. It's a joke. No, number five, Andy. Number five, and the again, these all get as we say all the time. These get super tough, and this is not easy. But uh, call my name is my number five. Uh, I'll call it, your Brent. name. Eat Dumb it. ass. It's number five. Dumb ass is your name. No, and you're wrong. I listen. Listen. We're just going to skip call over that name. because Andy. Yeah. 
Just oh, me. Listen, my. Andy, this doesn't happen very often, but like, like uh, you've risen above <laughs> rent in the uh, idiot scale. You um, rose no. above Josh. <laughs> my number five. Rose is above Josh. Eddie coming out tonight. Um, Josh, that Josh is wrong again. Again, uh, it would be higher, but. I cannot rank a song that has the word trousers. You know, I can't just be rocking and like, you know, next thing you know, uh, I hear the word trouser and it just, just stops me. You well, know, logic, uh, man. It's like fuzzy math, man. That doesn't no, make any sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, fuzzy just, math. Certain words I can't have in my rock songs. And see, this is, this is why we can't have Jack on the show. <laughs> I mean, I, you can have pantalones. Jack sits and listens to this. He's, he's like, you know what? He's like, screw Josh. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you can have pantalones over the word trousers. No, trousers yeah. works. Well, I say trousers all the time strictly because of the song. I'm trying to get it back into the lexicon. Hey, who knows? They were trying to reach over to our our, our people across yeah. the pond in England. Yeah. The Mark Greenways of the world. Yeah, yeah they, they, they say trousers. Yeah, the, uh, he wears his knickerbockers too tight. Eric. Hello, do you have your trousers on? What's, you know. what's, your, number, what's your number five? Trevor. I- I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be solidarity here with Josh. Damn straight. And say Eddie's coming out. That's such a great <coughs> song. It is. It, a, is. it is a great song. Um, it's it's hard it's hard to rank these. Well, it is. It, uh, this is brutal. These now final getting, five. They shouldn't have written upper, upper half of the album. Yeah, it's it's hard, it's hard to pick pick out but it's yeah it's more a testament i think to this to the strength of everything it's <laughs> it's such a fun song to to play live too and um i've always got the unpredictability of not knowing in the live show if jack's going to come in right away on the verse or or if he's gonna um I walk out and 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 play more improvisational bass and you know which is which is fun whenever he does that too mm-hmm. and, yeah and, yeah and by the <laughs> it's such a great climax in in that solo yeah the dual the dual solos yeah it's absolutely mm-hmm. brilliant um no question just it's a, something has to be ranked in this list right so yeah that's right yeah. well it's, it's true uh, it's unfortunate well i mean i have it at five eric's got it at five brent's got it at six and we know andy know what the fuck he's talking about because he ranked call my name five so um <laughs> uh brent Number four. Uh, you know, speaking like Eric, you know, it's on the way you roll the dice. So we're going to play rough tonight. Hells to the yes. You know, like I said, we've got this Midwestern idea of, you know, we still love those old lyrics. They don't offend us. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, Andy, no, is, well, when Eric put it that way, it made me rethink. Uh-huh. No, no, it, it, it's, a, it's a fun song. I remember, I remember when I was a kid, and, I, and my Dawn Patrol record, generally, you, it, it was tough to flip over a record. You, you had your first couple of songs that you knew that they would play on MTV. Those first two songs were on that one side. And I, didn't, I rarely flipped it over. I don't know. I knew the songs, but I rarely flipped it over. But when that MTV concert came on and I heard Play Rough live, mm. it, it, it's always been one of my favorite tunes. Yes. So, Andy, is yes. that your four as well? Absolutely. Freaking lutely, it's number four because it freaking rocks. Opens with that nice little acoustic and then da 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 da. Just makes, mm, yeah. makes this face. All right. That's Eric, what I do. it looks like me and Eric are the only ones with any uh, sense there. My number four. It would I, be Eric and I. <laughs> if you had any sense. Stance in motion. My number four <laughs> is Can't Find Me a Thrill, which we've talked about already in the uh episode but again it's uh lyrically it's a little bit darker than most night ranger songs um and it ranks above it's like right there with eddie what takes it above eddie more cocaine less trousers in my night ranger songs so my number four is can't find me a thrill eric your number four. Oh, this is tough this is tough i i think i'm gonna go do it, Eric. Just say it. I know. I know what he's thinking. I'll, I'll go sing me away. Oh, oh. That's, that's tough to do. It's tough. But yeah, uh, sing. But sing me away is such a wonderful, 
It is. Yeah, we, all, it, we always play it. It's always in there. I get to hold that note. Yeah. That, that note actually ran out on me the other day. It, it's never run out on me before. I sampled it with like a crazy amount of time thinking like I'll never have to hold it that long. And we were playing the other night and, and Jack went into a story and I'm just holding it and I'm like, am I, am I going to make it? You know, yes, am, what, what can I do? You know, and I should have made it longer. So it's, I'm like, I'm going to make it. And then it's like, right, right before we're going to, we're going to start the song. All of a sudden it just cuts off and Jack turns and, you know, gives me a look and I'm like, uh, yeah, that's, that's your fault. You know how you end that? I was trying to conserve Ram with my choices. Like we'll never hold it that long. <laughs> <laughs> You know how you correct that, <laughs> but but I love I love the song. It, it's it's yeah uh, great um uh like great great um like uh complexity with the harmony too. Like but the verses are in the in the key of A, but then like you get to the you get to the pre chorus and you're um in the in like D minor, but it um but then it modulates and then it modulates again and. and Whoa! Well, now we have this rise up into the chorus, and where did it's yeah really brilliant. Some some of the most brilliant uh, quarterly uh, of the entire Night Ranger catalog, in my humble opinion. Yeah, and yeah, from the from our perspective, it seems like a entire. simple song. <laughs> it seems simple, you know. Just it's there's nothing, but yeah, and you break it down like that it makes it even better. Hmm. Well, well, if you if you know you're gonna run out next time, and Jack's just talking, the the way to correct it. It's just to get the microphone to go one, two. You know, he's like, what's that? <laughs> you do. That's, that's uh, all you got to do. Well, Eric, I have a, I have a, uh, maybe a theory on why you've run into that problem. Do you know what that is? Uh, what would that be? It, for the longest time, Sing Me Away was the second song in the set. So you generally jump from song one to song two, and you don't really have any bantering you know stage bantering now you guys are doing uh four in the morning is the second song so now Our, you have that part Jack, where hey how are Jack's everybody? getting loose yep and you used to never have that before but because it was always track it was always song two and now you guys have been doing it track three wow that's such a great thank you you Sir. absolutely rationalized that choice for me you're right when i first sampled it we we're still playing "Sing Me Away" number two. So yeah. I out there. Thank yep. you. There you, you go. Feel even. You know what? I should uh, fucking have a podcast on Night Ranger. You know, I can't. I you know, I can't figure out anything else in my life. You know. Yeah. Like, this we got everything else chaos. Yeah. Why does my family <laughs> hate me? But uh, hey, why is why is Eric's keyboard sample not? <laughs> hey, well, here I can put these two together. Uh. Uh, so number four, Eric, sing me away. So let's, I'll kind of review here. So Brent, number 10 was Penny, then Young Girl in Love. At night she sleeps. Can't find me a thrill. Eddie, Night Ranger, then number four, Play Rough. Not really a correct list. Andy, 10 was Penny, Young Girl in Love, nine. At night she sleeps, number eight. Seven, Can't Find Me a Thrill. Six, Night Ranger. Five, Call My Name for shit you don't know nothing andrew number four play rough my number 10 i changed it penny nine and i she sleeps young girl in love play rough six right where it should be sing me away number five eddie number four can't find me a thrill and the guy who's actually in the band number 10 eric young girl in love number nine penny Number eight, Eric, you kind of lost me on this one. Can't find me a thrill. Seven at night, she sleeps. Six, play rough. Five, Eddie. And four, sing me away. So our top three, Britt, number three. We gave a little Josh a little bit of um, advice. I know why your family doesn't like you. Like at Thanksgiving mm-hmm. time, you got to, you know, Aunt Ethel, damn, your turkey's not as good as grandma's. You got it all wrong. Yeah, he does the same thing. Did- wrong. He I does did. the same thing to his family that he does on this show. I generally tell people to piss off like before they even talk to me. So that's probably some of that it. Might be a wrong <laughs> lead in right there. You know, God, Aunt Martha, what the hell did you do to the giblets? You know, it's like. Uh, I, uh, yeah, we, I mean, you all can hear it. You know, I'm right. 
Yeah, All right, so, Brent, what's number three? Let's do this. Andy, I don't you, you tell me all the time, and I always tell you not to. Don't tell me you love me. Just don't. I don't want to know. Well, I do love you, buddy, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to know. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't love you. <laughs> oh, man. Don't tell me you, you I thought you were my friend. Number friend. three. Hey. Uh, I mean, don't it, 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 it's I can't agree with you on this. It's Wrong. not it's not any weaker than my number one. It is it, it is the classic sense of a classic song, period. This is the song that started it for them. Heard. This is how we know this band. Have you guys ever heard? I think it's on VH1. They did like hard rock stripped. They had two volumes of it. And um there's acoustic songs on there. I think Night Ranger did Sister Christian on one. Yeah. And Don't Tell Me You Love Me on the other. And yeah. No matter how many times I listen to it, um, you know, it ain't the way you shake. I swear, uh, he say, it sounds like it ain't the way you shit. And like, I know it's shake and I'm like, like, I'm listening to it. Like, you know, where is the K or the E? Like, I Let me think- pull off the mic, though, as he says, it ain't the way you shit. No, it's like I'm literally I it's it couldn't be clear. He's got to do his dance. No, it's like I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure he's I don't know. But anyways, I mean, I don't know. I've done the studied it. If you studied. have the VH1 stripped, I don't know if it's volume one or volume two. Listen, to I'm it. Not, and not. Um, like I like I say shit. It's not as clear as him saying it on there. So, uh, anyways, um, it ain't the way you shit. It ain't the way you shit to kill me. Oh yeah. yeah. That, well, this, the too. second the second part is just that one line. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, pull that up, and maybe we'll find out that you know he goes, yeah, that was the original lyric. I don't know. Andrew, number three. Number three, uh, just slightly ahead of Mr. Levy himself. Uh, sing me away. It's uh. It's it's such such a great song. Um, I mean, you think about one of the things I love about this song is the guitar solo, right? The harmony guitar solo, and I say this a lot to other friends of mine that I talk to about guitar solos and how sometimes they're just it's just people cramming notes. This thing is not. It's them playing a riff over and over in harmony, and it's perfect for the song. It's like it, it, it's like their restraint and not you have two of the just uh, phenomenal guitar players and they're holding back because it's what the song needed it's fucking perfect and and kelly it, kelly it, sing in the break and sing the, the video brent the video that's what he's doing right there and it's the piece of choreography that might have lasted the longest they've always you know done that uh yeah really you know uh because it used to be, remember, uh, like during the verses, like the second verse, Jack would kind of, and they do it, I think, in the MCA video where Jack kind of puts his arm around Brad and they leads him around stage. Yeah. And then in the solo, it's always, it's always uh, the two guitar players, Jeff, Brad, now Carrie and Brad, over by you, Eric, playing that right. solo. It's always that yeah. over on that side. So, uh, um, they and then done. The, the ending where they're, they're all yeah. you know, together. The, I mean, every it's just it's it's near perfect for me. So personally. it's uh, like a choreography. I mean, there's little things they've always done, but that's like a big part and it's never changed. They've always they still do it to that day. Yeah, I mean, day. live mm-hmm. when when I hear Eric hit that the the and hold that, I, I know it. I'm like, and I still it's still forty years old uh, the song but what I, I still get so excited when i hear that and i'm like me and brent were like one two and we start air drumming it and it, it's i'm gonna listen to it when we're done i'm gonna put it on and listen to uh, it. i was trying to listen to when you were talking when you guys talk it drowns his keyboards out they, they cut out i'm thinking oh. shut up <laughs> <laughs> play it real quick eric let's just take it in <laughs> I mean, it's just anyway. I love this song. Moving on. 
I've said my piece. My number three is the song Night Ranger. Uh, it uh, just has that darkness, this moodiness to it, you know, with the uh, 13 crickets at the beginning. Um, <laughs> you know, Catcher in the Rye, you know, yeah. and I mean, you got to remember, uh, Catcher in the Rye was that was the book that uh, John uh, Chapman, John was, Chapman. You know, was carrying when he. Uh, murdered john lennon just a little bit of darkness there to it i mean i never knew kind of like what a night ranger was you know but it didn't matter it rocked and it's got that uh where it kind of vamps out and then comes back yeah. up a little bit that's a that's a that's a sure comes yeah that's fun so you know it had a little bit of er everything kind of like what i liked about eddie is you know it's kind of slow dark and then you know picks up comes back down and then just it ends with a bang just like the uh the uh this you know the song night ranger does <clears throat> again it's higher just because it does not have the word trousers in it um but that is my number three eric your number three Oh, I, I, I swear I'm not trying to like brown nose to the fans in motion leader here, but it's but I can I'm also going with Night Ranger. Well, you just we can't argue with you because it's a great song. I mean, there's a Colorado <laughs> schoolboy. I, there's I have no argument. And he can't just, argue with it because at the end of the day, he knows I'm right. Never. Negative <laughs> ghostwriter. Negative <laughs> ghostwriter. And I was thinking about this one, like, because, because the live performance and what we do with it live is like, you know, it, uh, it um, goes beyond what's on the original recording. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, do I, okay, do I rank this song based on, you know, uh, what the way it is in our live show, or do I rank this just strictly by the, the studio recording of it? So it's in the end, I don't know, maybe, maybe a bit of both, but it's, I love this moment in the night and it's it's such a it's such a testament to kelly that is uh you know like <laughs> how, how many drummers are you gonna find where it's, it's like okay you know for the drum solo i'd like everybody to come up here and play the drums yeah. with you know and, and let's make let's make this a uh, group thing and and it's like by doing that and, and when we all get into it it's it's such a fun mm -hmm. it's such a fun you know it's it's like hey we're we're not you know being you know, we're not taking ourselves too seriously or being too pretentious. You know, it's it's like it's rock and roll and it's fun at the end of the day. And but it's but that being said, too, it's it, you know, that song is it's definitely got some of the more challenging uh, things musically to, to pull off. And, and we were changing tempos and we got those <laughs> yeah. stop times and um, and all that going on. So but yeah, um, it's, it's such a blast. I, I think when I first joined the band, we were playing uh eddie's coming out tonight almost almost every show and it and it was like years into my tenure before we even played night i was just, I was, just I was just going to bring that up eric because it seems to me that and you know again sometimes memories can play tricks on you that um it wasn't necessarily a song they played a lot once they got back together and i don't even know if they played it on like big life or man in motion you know you guys would know better than that um i can't you know i mean i had you know some bootleg tapes from the man in motion but um uh it just seems to me like one of the reasons why i always liked that song was i heard eddie live so much and to me that was kind of like the brother song to eddie and i didn't hear it as much and i didn't get as tired from it so uh, you know if you're listening out there you got you know Brent and Andy, you could probably talk about too, but uh, I, you know, and Eric, just what you're saying is I don't remember that being a big part of the set list until the last maybe 10 years or so, I guess. Um, maybe Andy, five. Yeah. yeah. Brent, didn't we used to always, back in the day, we'd see him on the earlier show tours. We used to always say, God, if they would just play Night Ranger. And it was such a rarity when we would hear it. Wow. Well, um, I don't remember back in the early days, no. No, but I mean, it. like Seven Wishes and Big Life, it, it wasn't on those tours. By Even, now, again, you have a better memory, but it seemed like there were a couple songs we always like <laughs> just play this song. I kind of remember that from like 2007 and four, like, 
you know, wanting that to be one of the songs. And yeah. when you would hear it, it was like, oh, that's special. Now it's, I still like it, but it's not as special because it's almost a standard. Now, what's cool is, Eric, are you talking about the multiple everybody coming out during that drum solo? One, it's the casual night range or the casual fan who's kind of new to seeing Night Ranger live. That's always one of the things they gravita- gravitate yeah, to. That's the highlight. Seeing, yeah. But um, I saw Roger Earl joined you guys a couple of weeks ago for the drum oh, that's solo. Right. Uh, yeah. Roger Earl, the uh, legendary drummer for Fog Hat. Um, but I saw a video clip where you guys had played a show with him into November in Georgia. And uh, there's Night Ranger with Roger Earl from uh, Fog Hat back there pounded on the drums. I had no idea he was coming out. It's it, uh, uh-huh. I'm wrong over to this kit and there and there he's yeah mm. that that was fun that was yeah. really i i was super happy he came up and joined us yeah. yeah um so number two brent my number two and, and, and eric when you were playing it a moment ago <laughs> i've said this since we started this this podcast the song never ceases i i smile as soon as I hear you go into those keyboards for Sing Me Away, I just, I, I light up. It is, yeah. um, it just makes me happy. And it, it's such a cool yeah. tune. And, <coughs> and, you know, and my wife, my wife is always like, you know, the opposite of everything I like. She, she's kind of, you kind of, kind of piss on it a little bit. And I like her already. In the past year she's kind of coming coming around to you guys more and when we were we were in dixon i turned around and i i saw her mouth go see me away and i was like yeah <laughs> it's the little it's a little victories so it was really cool <laughs> so see me away is my number two um it, it's just a it's just a killer ass song you know, I, I I think this is more the way I ranked them the last time. Maybe "Don't Tell Me You Love Me" might have been number two, and "See Me Away" was three. But those two songs are really interchangeable with me. I mean, they're just, they're iconic in well, the Night it, Ranger set list. Period. It is the best Night Ranger song written in a museum. It um, should never go away. It should never be taken out. Andy, your number two. Number two is a song that I never grow tired of, and I always love it when it's played live. And I don't want to live in a world where there are Night Ranger concerts and I do not hear a story about Eddie. Eddie's coming out is my number two, solidly my number two. It is, I love this song. This in Touch of Madness, I need to hear every show. Simple as that. Yep. I love trousers. Right. (laughs) I'm wearing trousers right now. I ain't lying. Yeah. We're going to have to make some merch with Andy's mug on it with just the line. I love trousers. Yeah. Um, and then on the back, Andy, Andy's coming. Andy's and Andy's busted out tonight with the seam split in the middle of the butt. Just well, just a, or just an ice machine on the back. Let them all day it out all day. Uh, so my number two is it's number two because there's just a better number one. But my number two is don't tell me you love me. The song that kicked it all off for the mighty machine known as Night Ranger. Yep. It doesn't yep. get any better than that. Yep. And I love the live version on Live in Japan. Um, that part you just played, Eric, maybe rem- remind me of that because they do a big like they hold that out and Jack talks to the crowd and everything during that, but you guys oh. don't do that anymore. But and plus Eric gets to sing now in that part of the song. Oh, oh yeah. I, yes. that's great. I'm always standing there hoping like, don't. <laughs> please, no. yeah. You do look uncomfortable when they, when they call to you, you're like, Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> but you know, it works. It, it works. It really does work. It works good. Well, I'm hoping <laughs> that fun. It, it, it seems it like Jack it, enjoys it. It is it get, fun. It gives you confidence for the uh, Eric Levy solo record. Yeah. Everybody, every good boy does fine. I've already named it. <laughs> ESP, Eric. Eric's solo project. <laughs> There's already an ESP, Eric Singer project. Or saying. what we do 
Eric Basically, Singer to play with him. We get a photo of you, yeah. you know, you know, just high, drunk, everything together, uppers and downers, and you're just passed out, uh, you know, in the corner. And the name of the record is so low, like S O, and then the word low, so low. Get it? There we go. Uh, yes. Well, a solo yeah record. but i thought you'd just go with eric levy a typical tuesday night and uh eric but, levy but, no but what uses his kids thanks well, to you thanks to you guys but we're paying we're playing up on that that image that he has a night ranger that you know that biker the the dark glasses and everything and uh that's what we're that's what we're uh that's the brand we're building and uh um, <laughs> uh that's why we're uh you know, the title track off his record is going to be eight ball Saturday night. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, talking about the benefits of a little bit of, you know, heroin mixed with some cocaine. Um, yeah. But uh, that's just, I digress. Uh, it's, he's so the opposite I think of it's that. It's Josh's solo album. It's so the opposite <laughs> of that. Um, <laughs> this is this is how to how to make sure your YouTube video is demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I I am um, I I promise I'm not brown nosing, but my number two I am right with Josh, and I I just say don't tell me you love me, and it's you know I tell my kids, I'm I'm like you know I know I'm we're singing don't tell me you love me, but you can tell me you love me. Yeah, and, don't don't okay. listen to lyric. No, like it yeah it's another one of those like out of contact like we're we're like um you know albums away from something like forever all over again at this point right exactly like we we want to get a forever all over again on on the dawn patrol album you know like uh, you know i'm falling in love with you forever all over again yeah you know this is this is you know don't tell me you love me i don't want to know but yeah, but it, just... in the context of the lyrics though again it's one of these songs where it's like okay they've got their you know messed up it, dysfunctional relationship but it's but they're in it you know and then and later in the song jack turn, turn turns it around he's like all right tell me you love me love me well love yeah me. yeah even oh, Dad, I think on the, me, she breaks me, him down on the live in japan if i remember correctly when they did it live then he kind of stops and says okay tell me you love me in kind of what you're yeah. saying uh andy and i mean when it's rock and you're wanting to be like hard rock um it's it's better to have don't tell me you love me than tell me you love me uh you know you're a rock you know you're rock and roll man it's like don't you know don't tell me that shit i'm in a band baby. that's what michael bolton's for but then they followed up with sing me away which is tell me you love me and i'll you know i'll sing you away and so that's the great thing about night ranger you go from uh you it's know, a roller the, coaster ride of emotions you know, it really is get the, <laughs> you know get the fuck out of here to uh I will like a Shakespearean actor. I will sing you away. And then he gets uh, into the cocaine and women. They treat yeah, you the same. Like, I mean, it's like, what's going on? You guys are a mess. You know, but, but as a six year old listening to that, I realized, you know, <laughs> women are going to fuck your mind up. You know, yeah. like, you know, yeah. it is. It's pretty much a typical month with any woman, you know, ups and downs. And like You last a month with them. Mm, oh, yeah. You know, uh, so. All right, Brent. <laughs> This is the one time where Brent, I know, will make some sense because I've talked to him and I told him, listen, <laughs> you're usually wrong. I go, pick this as your number one and you'll be all right. So, Brent, what's your number one? My number one is probably my most favorite Nine Ranger song of all time. Mostus? Most. I said most. I didn't say mostus. I said mostus. Um, okay. Um, and, and don't don't get me off track here. If um if I would have been backstage in Dixon um on my birthday, I had planned to beg Jack to play this song for me live because I haven't heard this song live since the 80s. I mean me with me at a show. I never got to see the Dawn of Madness. I, I'm dying to see that tour if it ever happens again. But call my name is the most perfect between what you start out with eric on the on the keys to the build of that song is just freaking perfect (laughs) 
<laughs> I could keep going. It, it is perfect. just That's awesome. Yeah, so awesome. You know, because I know, I know we're, you know, Andy's not there, but us three are. <laughs> and I love is, the song. I'm not, don't misunderstand Andy, me. Andy, you ranked it five, you piece of, listen. Um, I mean, I will stand on my. <laughs> I've said, listen. I mean, Andy, how many years have I told you? God, I wish they play Call My Name. I just yeah. wish they play Call My Name. I mean, yeah. listen, you can be a felon, but you can't have Call My Name number five. There's just uh-huh. the things that are unexcusable. What's your number one? For me, number one is is the song. It's the iconic song. It's what everybody knows them for. It is still, for me, holds up fantastically. The number two song on the record, right? Don't Tell Me You Love Me is just... Brent introduced me to you guys with this song, and I was like, holy shit, or shank, or whatever. I mean, I, I like Trains now because of that song. <laughs> <laughs> It's just freaking awesome. And I never, I never tire of this song. And I think most people in the audience still, they, this is one of the songs they, and I know you're going to play it every show. That, that's a given, but my God, I love it. I love it when you break it down. I mean, Brent and I, we used to love, because we watched that concert video endlessly when, when Jack would drop to his knees yep. and the guys would all pause. And it's just, it was just fits going dun, dun, dun. And he just forever. Yes. And Jack would run to the side and try to get people. I think there was the Japan and he's trying to get people up. And, and he's like, just quietly, don't tell me you love. Ah, oh, it's the best. <laughs> Solos are soaring. Mm. It's it. It's, it's the reason the world knows Night Ranger. So number one. My crooked my fingers messed up. Yeah. Eric, our minds are just alike because, you know. <laughs> so Eric, what's your number one? And I guarantee it'll be my number one. Yeah, yeah, we only have one song left, and you and I have the same number three. You and I have the same number <laughs> two. Yeah, we're, we're, we're agreed. And, and this is another one where I'm like, you know, my personal bias is, you know, yeah, it's piano song, and it's the rare chance to, to do something that's uh, more down tempo with Jack, you know, because a lot, it's, they pit, you know, I'd, it, they're, it, you know, pigeonholed, I guess, into the idea that Kelly sings the ballads and, um, you know, but so, so, so to be in the set in that sensitive zone where just piano and vocal and having it be Jack's voice. Um, so he, he, he still just sings the snot out of it. I, he, yeah. he just, he, he sounds just phenomenal. And he's, I, it's, Jack sings he's, better than ever right now. Better. He really, truly, I don't know how it's even physically possible. I think he's, he's sounding the best vocally he's ever sounded in his life. Yeah. No, no joke. Um, uh, but that song, the way it's, it's like that, um, it, it like slowly builds over time and it's, but it's like that real slow and steady build, you know, it's like you get yeah. to, the, to the bridge and, you know, it's, you're still just kind of, <laughs> kind of just sit, you know, it's like, you're still in there, you know, it, and it's like, by the time you get to that end section, it's like, wait, are those the right? I got something weird going on with my keyboard. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's like by the time we get to the. Yeah. And it's another one of those like lopsided, like elliptical loops, right? Where it's not like four measures, it's not eight measures, you know, it's. It, it's it oh it's brilliant absolutely brilliant yeah I, it's a feel I love that. That, that might be my my favorite like moment of it it's yeah and and likewise you know the sentiment of you know maybe being like my favorite night ranger song you know it's mm-hmm. yeah i'm biased it's a, a piano song but yeah I, I remember playing that song at um a bar once and my buddy is there who doesn't really like 80s rock and that stuff and always gives me shit for night ranger and he didn't know that was night ranger and i think he asked who's this and i said night ranger he's like man it was pretty good and i was like well yeah mm-hmm. it's fucking night ranger. pretty good uh i just posted this the other day i don't know if you can read it uh when you're high as fuck and uh in oh, the car yeah. and this song <laughs> has the police siren in it and i just, like call my name for me yeah. So when you're doing like an eight ball Saturday night, Eric, um, 
uh, you know, that's, yeah, that's always got me that siren coming in and, um, true but, story, Josh, uh, many years ago, this is before I could even drive Brent. I, I don't know if you were with us or not, but I was playing that song on a, on a boom box in the backseat of my dad's car. We were driving back from Indiana and that part came on and he, he's like looking around. He's like, I was like, what's going on? He's like, do you hear the sirens? I'm like, oh shit, it's my, it's, I'm sorry. I turned the volume down. He goes, don't do that. I was like, well, I didn't write it. <laughs> but he thought there were cops. He was trying to pull, he was getting out of the way. And I completely forgot that. You don't that know that's that. coming and you're in the driver's seat and all of a sudden you hear those sirens? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's eyes up. He's at the mirror. He's at 10 and 2. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, I said, dad, that one's on me. Sorry, that's my bad. <laughs> now, Eric, <laughs> could you, if, like, say we're all in Lima in January, <laughs> and we're we're get talking, and 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 this came up. Could you all theoretically go on stage and play it, or would yeah. you need to rehearse it? No, it's um, you it's I I would I would be fine walking up and not sound checking. Just you know, or, or we they could just, all, we could always run it in the in the back if we decided to do it. We pulled it out. I want to say maybe yeah, but here and there, like every once in a while. It's, I, you know exactly. it hey let's let's do come my name call my name tonight is i i don't know why it, actually i i think i do know why we don't play it more i, I think it's because it, it's like we have we have the ballads that we have to play you know it's yeah if, if we didn't have to play sister christian every night then maybe mm -hmm. yeah it's like what do you drop to put that in call my name. yeah right well, you, you secret my well, success here, yeah. secret of my success so, here is yeah. here's my philosophy eric and i don't think i've really ever talked about this on an episode so what should happen is you need to take in consideration the venue right so if you guys are playing like song for soldiers or sounds on the grounds then it is your your set list that you're doing but if you're playing wabash indiana which is a theater and it's just you guys or you're playing like an upcoming show in lima and it's just you guys in a theater and you know the theater, it's not a festival or whatever. It's a theater, a thousand people. They're coming to see Night Ranger. Yep. Then they're not, you, they're not coming to hear yeah, um, it's, it's Ozzy not, Osbourne, you know. Well, that's not pick anything. No, 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 I don't mean I don't mean the, the disrespect to that. I mean <laughs> but I hear you people who are coming to hear Night Ranger, not just some band that's gonna play cor pop music. Correct. It's not, you know, uh it's not like the uh the georgia show but it, like i said the wabash indiana show just you know hey we're the it's us it's our show it's us and that's it maybe a local opener and mm -hmm. people are paying 50 60 bucks a ticket you know these are the ones that probably got atvpo you know they got you know dawn patrol those are the shows where you can i think you know we could take out something and put something in to where when you're playing the you know like when well where was the last time i just saw you uh tampa the uh the motorcycle show like okay that's not where you're going to play call my name right. um that's where you're going to play eddie and night ranger um and leave know. out secret of my success yes for that. right you know yeah. well secret of my success you always leave out but uh um but but it's the theater <laughs> show where you hey let's let's take out sentimental street oh hey and, whoa 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 and play call my name or Easy. well you gotta take something out uh you know well, so, they only do 13 to 14 songs they should just do a 15 set set list. Or, or 20 well, well, or listen, 20 you know i mean it's easy for us to no opening know, band sit I on know our, it is sitting on sit on our asses and say to do that but uh um i mean you know we're, we're not, I, I had to play i had to play 75 songs one night at the gig they could play one more song. Tell back them in, back right. in the day. Yeah. And you know what? You haven't, you haven't been on the road for 40 years, you know? Um, <laughs> so uh, um, it, it's still hard for Andy when he's back to cramping up. Yeah. yeah I so I, I, I don't have why we never seem to play more than 90 minutes unless it's a Donna Madness show. And then those are longer. Yeah. But that's, I, I, I actually really don't know the, don't know the reason why we never play more of an extended extended night yeah awesome. it, right because awesome. it, it, it becomes the kind of thing like well what are we gonna what are we gonna leave out you know if right. if, if we're gonna pull in uh, the deep tracks it's yeah it's, i mean it's certainly it's it's uh the, the common <laughs> issue of discussion 
<laughs> in and yeah. in, in the green room night after night is you know yeah it's it, is it a night for deep tracks if so you know what's the right deep track where could we put it in what what are we going to take out um yeah and it does really depend on the crowd if if we're playing a motorcycle rally yeah it's um yeah we're, we're not you know what that. you guys you guys play enough of those where you guys just need to learn to play born to be wild uh I think we've done or it. Freebird. You know, but my goal is, you know, is this is how I picture it. I get forwarded Night Rangers upcoming week schedule. I have to be by my phone at a certain time for the phone call for me to give you the set list. I'm like, all right, boys, tonight Here it is. you are opening up with Neverland. And no, I just, yes. <laughs> And I just hear a whole bunch of God damn it, shit. I didn't practice that one. God damn it, Brad, you're supposed to practice that one. What about <laughs> color your smile? Gotta have that in there. And, and then after all the bitching and them cussing at me, it comes back to the same set list. But uh um, but yeah, that's you remind me, Todd Confessori used to have a, a list that he would just keep like a, with all the Night Ranger paperwork. And every once in a while, he would pull it out and it would, it was his dream set list. <laughs> Moss, and it was like, yeah. all kind, it was like mountain the, song, mountain ma song, mountain song off the somewhere in California. It, oh, and uh, don't tell me, uh, no time to lose you. No time to lose you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Always. Yeah. The bye bye, baby. Not tonight. That one. Yeah. Oh. Baby, not, not uh, oh not, man, yeah. but uh, mountain song, yeah, it's just another thing where I'll argue, uh, you know, that should have been. I, and I still like lay it on me, I'd take oh, that yeah. back any day yeah, of the week, well, you know, that was fun opener, too. Yeah. The high energy, yeah, you guys, that was one of the songs from that record you guys played a lot on that tour. Usually, you opened with it, I think, uh, at least if not opened, it was the second song. Um, yeah, we heard it. Used uh, to see when, when I first, like when I first joined the band, um, the opener, like for uh, I don't know how long before, uh, had always been uh, "This Boy Needs to Rock." Yeah, mm -hmm. they were doing that from about two thousand seven nine, somewhere in there is when it really they started doing that and then doing throwing in "Highway Star" in it um, from Deep Purple. Um, did, did, did I think they did that on the the Rock and Shaboya record mm -hmm. from two thousand seven? But uh, yeah, um, I think you're. But, I remember uh, seeing you guys at Riverbend. Um, hang on one second. My dad's trying to call me real quick. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, but like like I said, there's always, and I like it too when you have that new record. There's always that one track you know you got to you know you should throw in there. Lay it on me, High Road. Um, and uh, somehow, some way, and then with ATBPO, it seems like it's breakout, and that's what it's like when you guys are still playing. Somehow, some way, it's like, all right, that's the album of the past. Um, either play a new ATBPO song, or that is that's your spot, really. That's your spot to throw in. Uh, Why does love have to change? Or call my name? Or uh, or the song you played earlier. Uh, don't start thinking I'm alone tonight. Please. <laughs> but I was gonna say real quick. I, I got drunk. I was. I saw you guys at Riverbend when, uh, and you opened with "Lay It On Me" years ago. And it was I was a probably the, tour. I was probably the only person in the in the venue going yes. And it was like, uh, I, was like, I was like, I love this. I'm looking. I was like, oh, you people all well, suck. But, but the whole the, lot of you suck. But here's the thing, uh, is. Again, it goes back. You're playing Riverbench, so they're probably opening for Foreigner and Journey. They did a half hour set. Yep. So what I'm saying is that's where venues come into play. Now, I don't like playing a new song when you guys open it. To me, you play a new song and you 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 you're selling. Um, if if it's the first song you play, you really can't go back and and talk about it. To me, a new song should always be song three or four or five. Where you can go, hey, we got kind of like what you guys do now. We got a new record out. Go buy it. And here's a song. <coughs> when you do a new song at the very beginning, you don't really get to get to sell the album because it's just there. And then you're off to sing me away or whatever track two is. But uh, anyways. Yeah, but, you, but you can get away with it in the first song. And yeah, no one's going but, anywhere. 
Yeah, yeah the general thinking uh, is uh, what, right. We're af we're afraid of what we put first if if we put something that you know like one of the really recognizable songs first because uh, number one you know it's the sound is probably going to be redialed in for you know depending mm -hmm. of course if if it's us at a Pacific at a uh, at a pack at an art center um, and it's an evening with it, sure with we have to worry about any of that and what we play first can be different but yeah if, if we're playing with a bunch of different bands or um or if we don't get a sound check and we're just rolling in it's it's like um what's nice about somehow some way is is that it's more of an up tempo but it's you know it's not like a dark up tempo it's it's it, it it just feels it feels like it can work well in that slot like hey you know people are still filing in maybe and you know it's okay that it's a song that people don't recognize because they're not going to watch her yeah. song. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, those are just some, some of the thought processes. Well, to, to me, then, you do uh, uh, Coming For You, you know? Now, oh, see, yeah. what I like is they're still playing yeah. a song off the last album before yeah. ATV. All right. And and I love, that's one of my all-time favorite Nine Ranger albums. All right, but listen. Don't let up. Know, that's a, that's, why I, that's what I liked about the 80s when a band released an album. They promoted that album. They played, and they, it. Play, they played it. To me, there, okay, now it's not the 80s. Times change, but, you know, you play Breakout and you play Coming For You. Coming For You could easily fall into... Now, Eric, you you know, you provide that whole different dynamic and viewpoint, but I don't care. Uh, that's still wrong. Uh, Coming For You should be track number one. Or no. play rough. Don't I let up. Come, and then, yeah. hey, you, you know what? Yeah. Don't let up and wrong. comfort me. I want to send a text to someone. Bingo. Right now. That's Eric, it, Andy. Eric, Don't let up. Come Eric, me. Eric does not want to play this as the opening track no more. I have to say, I agree. Um, and we want to hear Play Rough as number one. Eric said to call him. Send. Done. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, that's what show it is. Play Rough is first is asking for trouble. <laughs> people who have never heard the band before they're like what what is what? going on here hey, what? <laughs> I, 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 I just said i agreed with it i didn't i didn't say it was my idea um no we need a night I where they one time we were uh, uh hanging out and and, and uh carrie shows up and he was looking at like extra metal like even more than usual look at looking heavy metal and and jack looks over and he's like you, you know we're you know we're not <laughs> we're not Megadeth or whatever however he put it he's like you know we're like sing me away yeah <laughs> <laughs> you dropped some of the scarves and maybe Brad some called of the... it stainless steel and back in the day <laughs> yeah, stainless steel rock well eric thank you uh for uh for joining us uh even though we're recording this a uh, little bit uh what second week starting uh in december this is going to be our first episode of 2022. So uh, we kicked off 2021 with an episode with you. And why ruin a good thing? So uh, 2022, we will, uh, this will be the uh, first episode. Uh, I wonder what we'll be doing for the first episode of 2023. Hmm. Hmm. Well, my son. Well, we, son. We'll be getting uh, Eric's money's worth out of Hole in the Sun. That's right. We got to do that. Eric will be going, you know what? I didn't think it would work, but you were right. Play Rough uh, was a great opener. I'm glad you texted that to Jack. Uh, and uh, us closing the our initial set with Call My Name. Who would have thunk? Um, so I think that's what we'll be talking about uh, next year. So anyways, Eric. On behalf of Andrew and Brent Tree, thank you for joining us and ranking Dawn Patrol. Oh, great, great uh, seeing all of you. And it's, uh, I, <laughs> I, I have a blast on all of these. You guys are just fun to hang with. And yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. Thank you for inviting me back. You ready? Rock and roll. All right. All right. There it is. How was that, Eric Levy? His list was probably a little off from mine, 
I can't judge the man for that. He plays the songs. He lives the life. He is a living legend himself. Uh, I love these episodes, Josh, and uh, I hope we continue to do these. I would love to do these, and I know we've talked about it. I hope we get to do these with Brad or Kelly or Jack or Carrie. I would... I love to hear their perspective and their thoughts on the songs, especially the guys. I mean, Jack and them, they wrote them. They've been playing them for 40 years. Maybe they're tired of them, but uh, I'd like to see where they put the songs. So do your little texty thing there. Google it, send it out, see what you can figure uh, out for us. I would say that like, I would be surprised if they would just for the fact that it's so close and personal, but I'm not, I just remember, I'm not, I don't want to get too far into it, but I, was that one of the shows I was at and someone was getting a record signed and I'm not going to say what record yeah. and I'm not going to say which member, but I mentioned that I really enjoyed that record. All right. And this member said, Oh, that, that record sucks. And all I could see was the headline is, you know, yeah. You know, fan punches, ex-member you know <laughs> certain it's like certain. fighting words man like what you know? oh man that's tough you know it's like and it's like you know it's one of those guys like it's their record yeah. <laughs> the record sucks <laughs> i like, do not like this you put you know? it out and uh yeah you know like uh sometimes i think i'll just get like ptsd from that like be yeah. talking to him like you know well you know we had that producer for that record and all of a sudden bam 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 what's that for that record right, doesn't sorry. suck i'm sorry my bad on that <laughs> but uh so yeah it's like they have a, such a different perspective and yeah you know, I, I also think like we get them you get them on there and they talk about like oh this song it's horrible and it's like almost really it'll, it'll crush us yeah it's like it does <laughs> you imagine, so, like, dude, imagine it's, like uh, jack or kelly or brad saying like can't find me a thrill that they rank it like you know 10th and you're like are you fucking insane it still bothers me man <laughs> when that comment and oh, uh, shit. you know and it's like it would bother you like if it was a night ranger fan that said that like wouldn't really bother me too much but it would bother you know like you know fuck that guy saying that yeah and I, that's original that's how that feeling starts i'll play something from that record and i'll be like fuck that guy and it's like well that guy's the one on that record you know and it just fucks with you a little bit yeah, anyways so uh go to the facebook page if you don't like facebook go to uh youtube give us your your list of yeah Dom i mean Patrol. that's the thing i enjoy about this too is to see what other people's thoughts are and where they rank them and we've well, done this before know. it gives me an idea how much of a dipshit they are um yeah and uh, uh, in the end, tell us what your list is. Tell us, you know, why you guys think my list is automatically correct and how much it's influenced you. Um, and you're feel free to tell Brent and, and uh, Andrew how wrong their list is. <laughs> and be cordial to Eric when you tell him how wrong his list is. Right. So, uh, yeah. There you go. Um, do the uh, commercial spiel. Thanks, everybody. Um, we appreciate everybody that listens. Everybody that's on the fan page. This is all for you guys. We just get to be the host of the party. If you're listening to us or you're not listening to us, which wouldn't make sense, but, uh, you know, tell a friend. You can find us on all your favorite podcatchers. We say this every time. You've got Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. YouTube is awesome because you can listen to it and comment about it, and you get to see our lovely faces. Uh, this episode, you know, Brent's not here. We miss you, buddy. But uh, this looks better. Hey, hey, hey. This looks better do, with us, don't you think, do Josh? Not, just, do not speak for me, please. Just the two. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much. And if you are a listener to the show or the well, however you listen to it, tell somebody. Get one more person to join the page, one more person to listen to us because it helps us spread the word and the Night Ranger love. And we want to keep this band rocking as long as we can. Josh, anything else you want to add? Before yeah, we say if, if you're goodbye. watching this on YouTube, uh, click subscribe, go to the uh, Facebook page and like it and go to Instagram and uh, the Twitters and follow yeah. those pages as well. And uh, Jack and Kelly and Eric all have and Night Ranger all have 
Twitter and Facebook or, uh, Instagram as well. So um, there you go. Uh, root for the Bengals this weekend. Oh, yeah. I mean, if your team's already out of it, if you want to send some good vibes, send them to uh, Paul Brown Stadium this coming Saturday, 425. We place the Raiders. I mean, I've been telling people. We deserve this. I've been telling people ever since about the middle of the year ago, this is the year they're going to break the curse and they're going to win their first playoff game. And I've I've been out there saying it, putting it in print. But deep in my heart, I know. Deep in my heart, I know. Strange fact, Josh. I'm sure you've probably seen this meme floating out there on, on the interwebs. A... There has never been a text sent that said that referred to the Bengals winning a playoff game because texting was not invented or not available the last time we won a Bengals. You probably need an game. asterisk on that because there's <laughs> probably a lot of people who thought the Bengals were going to beat the Steelers when they got the ball back. And with like so a, say, not a, not a true, accurate, factual, so ah, we correct won. text has and been then, sent. In the Garrett, texting age, we have, yeah. we have not won a playoff game since – what is it? Uh, 31, 1991, years? January so, 91. You can do the, uh, I have a nephew who's just turned 33 yesterday. He has never seen the Bengals win a playoff game. Yeah. We deserve this. We're like Tampa Bay or Detroit back in the day. We have the longest running streak without a playoff win. Current. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think I'm going to go cry. The one good thing about being a Bengals fan is they've, they've given me a, lifelong lesson on disappointment and you know so i'm pretty yeah. much you know you can't really do anything to me to disappoint me i've already learned these lessons so Absolutely. anyways go Bengals. we will see you in a couple weeks hey yeah am i recording yeah i am there we so go are. where the hell do i end record it there it is okay let's act like we're professional here take us out See you, everybody. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Later. Was in Chicago, Illinois. That's where Eric Levy was. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sir Eric Keyboard Levy on keyboard. <laughs> now, the last time, the last time we came here, three years ago, Eric composed.